media survey of oh god oh no this is gonna be cringe isn't it left <laughs> oh man donald trump's coming by for breakfast is that uh just so you know like okay fine what'd you discuss i've i do um let's just say uh I, he did most of the talking what <laughs> that was it. it was just a breakfast did he ask you for money the great replacement theory is a, a neo-nazi trope destiny how influential do you think elon has been on moving the needle forward with electric vehicles and the development of a private space program i think he was probably instrumental i don't know if we would have any private space program if not for him and it feels like he moved the uh, needle forward on electrical vehicles by like 10 years do you know what the term woke actually means <laughs> um oh no <laughs> In a minute, I'm going to bring you my conversation. Oh, we have 60 with Elon FPS? Musk, Cute. The one that everyone is talking about. Contrary to what you might have heard, we weren't canceled by X. Yes, after months of begging me, wooing me to offer some exclusive content on his platform, Elon Musk decided to scrap the deal. But our plan is, and always has been, to release this show everywhere on YouTube, on Spotify, on iHeartRadio. Just about any place you stream content. Now for my conversation with Elon. As with all my interviews, no restrictions, no ground rules, nothing off limits or out of bounds. That is until the interview ended. So what went wrong? I don't know. But my hope is that you learned something about both Elon and me. Elon did this guy so much advertising. True. <laughs> Oof, this is definitely a Streisand affected debate. Because I think if it would have just released, I mean, I'm sure people would have still... Um, People probably would have still talked about it, but damn, he blew this up way the fuck more. Two people who come from completely different vantage points on almost every single issue. And I challenge you, Elon, to watch the whole interview and tell the world why this isn't what you claim you want on X. Thank you for inviting us here. You're welcome. Your Tesla headquarters, I, it's, I'm surprised at how big it is. I've never seen it. Oh God, do they use that sound effect for every transition? That's a brave choice. You're welcome. Tesla headquarters. I, it's, I'm surprised at how big it is. I've <laughs> never seen it. Yeah, it's about three times the size of the Pentagon. Yeah. And we built it in 16 months. It's the fastest construction project in the United States since uh, World War II. So I'm here, you know, as you know, I'm on the platform because you are, you say you're a free speech absolutist, right? And she used the vine boom uh, yeah. instead. Uh, free speech. Bro. Bro, how sick would it be for the podcast to get like a little DJ thing or whatever, or like a laptop, and then have like actual huge speakers in the room and do vine booms in real life? How scared would debate opponents be? Oh shit. As, uh, as, as much as possible within the bounds of the law. Yeah. So uh, I, the reason I'm saying that is because there are no conditions on this interview. You said that, you know, we'll speak to you for an hour. I don't like sound bites, so I welcome that. So let's get yeah. into it. So we're here in Austin, South by Southwest uh, is going on. We're at the Tesla headquarters. You are in the process of moving SpaceX here, I understand? No. Uh, so uh, SpaceX has a, a massive uh, facility in South Texas. Was this interview supposed to go up on Twitter, as especially with Twitter Elon? I think, but the Don Lemon made it sound like they were going to post it everywhere. So I don't know if they had an exclusive deal or if it was just supposed to go up on Twitter as well or what, but... Do you have any interest in talking to Don Lemon? I might be able to hook it up. An in-real-life friend knows him. If he wants to, I have no idea what we would chat about, but where we build and launch Starship. And then we, we have um, in Bastrop near uh, Austin, we uh, are about to start production at a, a Starlink, uh, a large Starlink factory for Starlink terminals. But, it's, uh, but, but we're not shutting down any facilities in California. Um, listen, we are here as part of a launch of a news interview show that is going to be on x.com. Uh, it's coming as a media industry, as you know, is going through a whole lot of changes. Yeah. X has also been affected by that. Where do you see X.com's role in the future of news and journalism, Elon? Well, I, I think the, I see the, the X as uh, it, it's, it's really the number one source of news uh, in the world. So it is number one, yeah, uh, the number one way that people actually are informed about any kind of news, meaning real. Someone said it was supposed to be exclusive to Twitter for 24 hours and then it would go up everywhere. Gotcha time events is the number one way that people actually are informed about any kind of news, meaning real time events, is uh, on the X platform, formerly Twitter. Um, there's, there's nothing even close for real time news. So um, we also want to expand upon that. Um, 
and we've, we have done so with uh, long form content. So instead of just doing what you call tweets, you can now do long form posts. You can post an entire essay. In fact, you can now uh, put an entire book, post an entire book to the platform. Um, you can do long form video content. Uh, so you can do uh, up to four hour video segments. Um, we really want news in whatever form it is, or information, I should say, in whatever form it is to be available on our platform, whether it's short, long, text, pictures, video, whatever the case may be. Yeah, and some of the stuff that we do, long form video, interview shows, or what, or what have you. Yeah. You, um, you reached out over the summer and you said, it would be great to have Matt. <laughs> Bro, this sound effect. Who thought that was a good idea? <laughs> I, okay, it's brave. Yeah. You, um, you reached out over the summer and you said, it would be great to have Matt O, Don Lemon, others on the left put on this uh, platform. You receive full support. The Digital Town Square is for all. What do you mean by that? Well, I just mean that uh, we want to make sure that there are. It feels like a mobile game. Like you just like, you just open like the four ninety nine daily pack or something, and you get like your a wide variety of viewpoints. That it's uh, you know we always have, for example, Tuck Carlson, who uh, most people will view as being on the right, um, and uh, you know that's that's a quite a quite a prominent uh, name on the right. We want to have. Uh, prominent names on the left as well uh, to provide uh, different views of points of view, uh, as well as centrists. Just basically a wide range of, of viewpoints on the platform so users can uh, hear different opinions. Uh, you know, they can hear, you know, what is, what's your point of view, what's Tucker's point of view, and make the, and, you know, and people can make their own decision about what, what, they, what they believe. You didn't mean that I'm on the left? Did you think that? I thought you were on the left, but yeah. I don't know. I'm used to, yeah. well, let's just say, I don't know what the left is or the right is, frankly, these days because Things can be quite polarized, but you seem. My impression was that you're uh, you're, you're you're be more likely to be described as on the left than the right. Uh, my my sense is you're sort of center left. I don't know. You tell me. Well, did you ever watch me on CNN, or did you watch? I saw me? Se I saw seg se yeah I, yeah not. I I saw segments. Yeah. But I mean, CNN is generally considered left. Yeah. Why do you say that? Why do I say CNN is generally considered left? Uh, I think if, if you look at any sort of media survey of- Oh God, oh no, this is gonna be cringe, isn't it? You know the one meme where it lists like all the media outlets and like CNN is usually on like the center left part of that meme. So like you guys would be like center left, right? Oh Jesus, he doesn't know what any of these things mean. This is the- how would you answer that question? You would say CNN is center left because far left in the United States implies either ultra progressive or further left illiberal anti-capitalist. So things like communists or socialists. CNN very clearly didn't give like full throat of support to people like Bernie Sanders. They don't seem to host any communists or tankies in a speech like that. And they're like kind of wokey progressive, but like as much as like a center to medium leftish Democrat would be. But they clearly like represent like kind of the democratic establishment interest, which makes sense because the majority of the Democratic Party is center left. So the majority of the Democratic electorate is center left. So the largest uh, news media stations are going to be center left, right? And you could say they might be a little bit further than center left, maybe mid left, but like you wouldn't call them far left. It wouldn't make any sense to do it unless you have, you're just like a Trump or you have no political understanding of media in the United States, I guess. That would be one answer you could give. But he's going to, he's going to point to the meme. He's going to point to the meme pictures. He's been, Elon Musk is thinking of this. Um, bias, ratings, new, this is what popped into Elon's head. 100%. I know exactly what he's thinking of. He's thinking of this. This is what popped into his head. And now um, and now Don Lemon just asked him, why do you think CNN is center left? And he's like, well, because um, he's seen CNN right here on this meme. Why is this chart wrong? I don't know if this chart's wrong, but you should, it's kind of dumb if you think somebody is a thing just because it's like on the chart. Like you would hope that if you run a major social media empire and you want to get involved seriously in news and media that you would know approximately why these things are where they are. Like, I think if, if you look at any sort of media survey of what is on the left or right, I think they would say like, for example, Fox is on the right <laughs> and CNN is on the left. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. It still seems pretty weird to challenge that though, right? Isn't it pretty common sense that CNN generally sits to the Wait, I'm sorry. 
He challenged it? I thought he just asked him, why do you think CNN is on the left? Is that a challenge? To the left? Why do you say that? It's, yeah. I saw safe, so, yeah. But, yeah, not, I, I saw segments. Yeah. But CNN is generally considered left. Yeah. Why do you say that? What, what do I say, CNN is generally considered yeah. left? Uh, I think if, if you look at any sort of media survey of what is on the left or right, I think they would say like- You're overreacting to very simple answers. Uh, the question that Don Lemon is very clearly getting into here, when I asked, uh, um, I wanna say John Snow, John Tron, when I asked John Tron, what's wrong with communism? My goal there wasn't to defend communism. I'm just curious, like, why do you hate communism? What's wrong with communism? Like, what's your response there? I just wanna know. Don Lemon is asking the same question here. Do you think Don Lemon is thinking that like, you think CNN is to the left? Excuse me, they're completely centrist. Like, they're not to the left. Do you think Don Lemon thinks that? Maybe he does, and he'll give it here later, but the question so far seems to be the case of like, oh, um, well, why do you think CNN is left? And that's, that could lead to an interesting conversation. He might say, well, I think they're left because I don't think they give Trump a fair shake. Or he might say, I think they're to the left because they're too woke. And then that opens up potential future conversation. Elon Musk doesn't know why they're left. He has no idea because his media literacy is almost a nothing. And so he awkwardly laughs and he's trying to think of a way to say the meme without saying he saw it on a meme. So he's like, well, there were surveys that said it was left. Really? CNN is left because the surveys say it's left? No, the surveys say it's left because of a variety of reasons for why people feel like it is on the left. For example, Fox is on the right and CNN is on the left. Yeah. So that's what is it? Am I missing something here? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you missing? Like this is a stupid answer to an obvious question that's supposed to probe for why you feel like a particular media thing has a certain political alignment, especially if you say you want to be a large owner of a social media platform that pushes media news. That's a good question. Then he gave the worst, the dumbest answer. Something? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I think that when, you, when, when I read that, I said, like many, uh, of my critics or detractors. They never really watched me on CNN. They just saw See, okay, I and I was even right. And you guys have probably watched this. You should have the advantage of being able to pre-watch this. This is what he's saying, yeah. Like, yeah, you guys make this claim about me. Have you even watched my media before? Or did you just call me left without even watching or having any idea of what's going on? Many uh, of my critics or detractors, they never really watched me on CNN. They just saw the clips of me either on social media or maybe on Fox News or on conservative media yeah. where it's sort of a where I've become a character or a caricature of what I actually am and it's taken out of context. Uh, sure. Well, how would you describe yourself? Um, I would describe myself as someone who is, I, I, I am independent in my thinking okay. and I vote for people based on the issues and how I feel about it, not necessarily because uh, of uh, political leaning of some sort. Well, I agree with that approach. I think that's generally how, yeah. how people should uh, you know, take things, which is... But that, so, so he's just giving, this is like every stupid, it's sad because this guy runs Twitter. He, he's arguably in a position to have more control over media than almost any other singular person in, in history in the United States. And hold on, Destiny, surely he should just own that he's left-leaning there. Don Lemon's issue is not that he's left-leaning. It's that when people like you or Elon say somebody is left-leaning, you don't say that to accurately describe where the aggregate of their political view sits in the totality of like all of American political views. You say that to discredit somebody. So when Don Lemon asks, why do you think I'm a leftist? He's trying to see why Elon thinks that because that's how you guys use that phrase. Oh, he's left-leaning, he's center-left, he's left, he's a left person, right? Elon has no answers because he has no media literacy and probably doesn't engage critically with any media at all. Don Lemon probably knows this. My guess is going to be that a lot of this interview is gonna be Don Lemon challenging Elon on level one basic questions and Elon getting ass mad because he isn't in a, in a circle jerk where everybody else is like eager to slurp his cum up off the floor and he actually has to provide an answer to anything. These two answers alone have already, are astoundingly stupid. That in, how, yeah, how people should, uh you know, take things, which is, I mean, there's, there's, there are a whole sort of set of issues which are sort of somewhat arbitrarily- Like, oh God. Like, when somebody says, like Don Lemon gave a boilerplate answer. Oh, I vote one way and I like to consider all the issues and do this and then that. That's a boilerplate answer. Now, if you disagree with Don Lemon and you think that you're, you know, a, a biased hack or whatever, which I'm sure Elon's probably said before, maybe I'm assuming that, right? Then, then you should say, oh, 
well, hold on, I, I agree with that in principle, but Don Lemon, you said this or this. Don Lemon, you said this about the J6 insurrection. I don't think it was an insurrection. John Lemon, you said this about uh, the COVID vaccines. You mentioned uh, that social distancing helped all of us so much, and I don't think it did. I don't think the research supports that. Oh, Don Lemon, you were pro-censorship, right? That would be a point where you could intervene and say, well, even though we supposedly share the same principles, I happen to know positions that you have. And he, it's not like this is a random ambush interview, okay? It's not like, you know, Don Lemon just showed up and started banging on the door asking for a conversation. Which I think that's generally how, yeah. At Destiny, most people get your point. It just seems like a dumb hill to die on trying to gotcha Elon. The implication that Elon can't even define what left-right media outlets are is retarded as fuck. I agree with you, except Elon can't. That's the problem. Yeah, how people should, uh you know, take things, which is, I mean, there's, there's, there are a whole sort of set of issues which are sort of somewhat arbitrarily bucketed into right or left. Yeah. Um, but I think most, I think most citizens uh, would think that uh, they would agree with some things on the left, but not everything or the Like some. this is such a retarded non-answer. He's just like, he's like a, I don't even want to say like a family member because usually family members that are more invested in politics will have better takes than this or have stronger takes than this. This is like, I think Elon Musk represents the quintessential, he's like 10 years too late. He's like the 2015 lay centrist who's like, oh yeah, I agree with everybody and nobody, and no, all the parties are the same and there's a little bit of good on the left and a little bit of good on the right and I am lay epic centrist and lay epic enlightened centrist and a little bit of like, bro, take a position on anything. I uh, would think that uh, they, they would agree with some things on the left, but not everything, or they'd agree on some things on the right, but not everything. Um, so uh, that's, that's what um, I think most people will feel, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. How much longer, and maybe, maybe the answer's forever, how much longer are we gonna have to call it the formally known as Twitter? I mean, even Prince went back to Prince instead of, is it always going to be X? It's definitely always gonna be X. So X is going through some changes. It's a lot um, of, of media companies are going through some changes. It's, it, you're in charge of an incredible platform, Elon. How do you feel that's going? I think it's going pretty well so far. Um, we're seeing record usage. Um, we've added a tremendous amount of functionality. I mentioned the, uh, uh, that you know, it used to be that you could only do short you know, text and maybe a, a picture or something like that, short video. Um, but now you can do long form text, long form video, uh, we've added audio video calling, uh, so you can not, not just do text DMs, you can do audio video calling. Um, we've improved the algorithm, I think, significantly, um, and um, made the system faster and better, and that's reflected in the increased uh, usage. So l let's talk about that, because you said you wanted all points of view, right? It's, it's a digital town square for all. Yeah. It's, the, the, the platform has kind of picked up where conservative media, some conservative media has left off. Um, that moving to the right, increasingly becoming. Do you think they're both being awkward because they're trying to feel like each other's positions were arguing? I don't think Don Lemon's been awkward at all. Isn't Don's response similar to the cringe self-proclaimed centrist like Elon? Yeah, that's why I said Don gave like a boilerplate response here. So this is an opportunity if you disagree with him to push back. Because what Don said was basically what every single media pundit will say. Oh, I arrive at my own positions and blah, 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 right? Part of a conservative dialogue, sometimes even conspiracy theories, right? There was an... Why are you all purposefully obtuse? Don Lemon is acting like a dick, making it about himself when the interview is to ask questions about Elon. An article recently written about you saying that you, Donald Trump and X were the most important um, people uh, or places or whatever icons when it comes to the MAGA movement. Do you agree with that? How do you feel about that? Uh, well, I mean, there are nonsense articles written all the time and I certainly wouldn't agree with that one. I put it in the nonsense category. So uh, the, 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 the objective fact of the matter, in my opinion, was that, um, that old Twitter was a, a fundamentally a, tw a tool of the, the far left. As far, and that was uh, really, I think, a lot of it was due to being located in San Francisco, Berkeley. Um, and so uh, it was Something San Francisco, the corporate culture being in San Francisco? A fundamentally a, tw a tool of the, the far left. As far, and that was uh, really, I think, a lot of it was due to being located in San Francisco, Berkeley. Being located in San Francisco. Okay. Um, and so uh, it wanted to essentially project the SF Berkeley uh, political dogma worldwide. Do um, you think it was far left? Yes, I do. I Be honest, you have to admit Elon is a pretty smart guy. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure he's smart in like running business or something. I'm not sure. I don't think I've ever heard. I think there's probably some narrow fields of expertise where he's pretty smart. But I typically when I hear him speak, he doesn't sound... Like he's definitely above average, but I don't think I've ever been blown away at him describing or explaining something. But I would imagine he knows something about rocketry and 
cars, hopefully. I would imagine, maybe? I would hope. I just haven't heard him speak on these subjects, so. I, I used to get, I actually got <laughs> off the platform because I would get so much hate tweets when it, when it was called in, so much hate tweets and-, and Apparently it's 155 IQ. I seriously doubt that. <laughs> and just guff from right-wing conspiracy theorists being called everything from, you know, fag to- Sure. Well, it's the, it's the internet, Jesus. you know. If people will do, I mean, I've been called every name. Did Don just drop them both? My God. Times a thousand. Yeah. Do you agree that it's right now? And he got near perfect scores on his math, SATs, Destiny. He's probably high IQ. Yeah, high IQ, like 120 to like 130 would be pretty, like incredibly high. I don't, my guess would be around there, I guess. 155? No. <laughs> That's retarded. And that even no. it's moved into sort of maga no, conspiracy I theory? I certainly don't think it's right. Um, the. The old school Twitter uh, suspended and suppressed uh, accounts that you'd call on the right, 10 times more than they did accounts on the left. And even when they did suspend an account on the left, uh, it was because of arguments between two people on the left. Uh, the political donations of old Twitter were 99% Democrat. Does that sound left, right, left wing or right wing to you? The Twitter donations? Yes. You yeah. know when they look at donations by, from a company? If a company donates nine, literally 99% of all donations are to Democrats, does that strike? Wait, firstly, it's not donated by the company, it's donated by employees in the company, right? It wouldn't surprise me if it skews like really, really, really heavily. He said 90% at first. Oh, I thought I heard 99. It donates nine, yes. You know when they look at donations by, from a company? If a company donates nine, literally 99% of all- Okay, I just heard 99. I don't know what you guys are- On the left? Uh, on the right, 10 times more than it accounts. Certainly don't think it's right. Um, the, the old school Twitter uh, suspended and suppressed uh, accounts that you'd call on the right, 10 times more than it accounts on the left. And even when they did suspend an account on the left, uh, it was because of arguments between two people on the left. Uh, the political donations of old Twitter were 99% Democrat. Wait, wh why were you guys saying 90%? Did he say 90 at some point? Does that sound left, right, left ring or right? Do you think you have 160 IQ? Me? My IQ is probably, it's, it depends on the day. I'd say anywhere from 145 to 185. Oh, there are some days where I'm very, very smart. I'm pushing 185, I would say, easily, for sure. That's why I'm able to be smarter than every single person that I've ever ran into in my entire life and had a debate with. Multiple added together. I'm going to you. The Twitter... You know what? Hold on. <clears throat> if I drop a 950 right now, you have to acknowledge that my IQ is 170 minimum, okay? <sighs>
But I'm curious if um, I'm curious if Republicans use that Win Red platform to donate a lot. I'm just curious about that. Um, Donald Trump donate donate now. I will never stop fighting for you. Donate one hundred dollars. Forty seven. Donate this amount if you think Donald Trump J is the greatest president of all time. This does so. This does use Win Red. Oh, secure.winred.com. Okay. Okay, let's look for Chick-fil-A employees. Chick-fil-A. Is this what they're actually listed as under the, did I type this in correctly? Okay, recipient names. Okay, let's look for, is it called Win Red? Viewing 19 filtered results. Seventeen. So there were only seventeen donos for the midterms from all of Chick Fil A, and the vast majority of them came from one person. <laughs> it was just this lady donating over and over again: five dollars, five dollars, five dollars, five dollars, five dollars, one dollar, five dollars. Try Lockheed Martin. I don't know. Wait, not this. Um, Chick-fil-A, oh, 29, oh, Mark Kelly for Senate, holy shit, you're spelling Chick-fil-A wrong? Oh shit, I am, you're right, wait, well, but it's listed here, do you think they have multiple, oh, this is way more people. Wait, why the fuck was the other one even listed here? It's probably whatever people write on their dono receipts, I guess, huh? Okay, interesting. So if we look at Act Blue for Chick-fil-A, we get 1,059 individual donations. And the other one looked like it had 1,407. Oh, 1,061. So it's like 50-50. I wonder how accurate this is as a metric. Okay, sorry, let me just look at one more quick thing, don't worry. Is there a way that you can filter this for unique donors? Like, I'm curious if you got rid of all of the, um, if you got rid of all of the duplicate, I, you can download a CSV actually. You could, you could export this and then do it. I'm just curious what that would look like. Is this only donors done through a company that seems like shit data? Um, no, no, this is donors done by any individual that works for Twitter as a company. When you donate to a political thing, uh, you have to fill out a tax receipt. You've got to fill out a little receipt saying who it's coming from because the Federal Election Commission, the FEC, is going to track all of this for politically recognized entities. So theoretically, you should be able to go on this website and look up any person that you've seen. Although it, it won't give you like their... Okay. Jesus. It doesn't list like their fucking address or anything, right? Okay. So we can look up and see Joseph Bell donated this. You can see like occupation, employer. These are all pieces of information that you, uh, you supply when you donate. So if you look up, oh God, my wonderful mother, Donald J. Trump for president. Wait, what is this act blue thing? Earmarked for Elect Diverse Democrats PAC. What the fuck is this? Is this going to be like some anti-Democrat shit that she donates to? What is this? Bold PAC launches Elect Diverse Democrats to protect the voting rights of communities of color. Did she get scammed? Why the fuck is she donating this shit? Probably some Cuban thing? No, I don't, she doesn't give a fuck. It's a different Mary Bonnell? Oh, true, Michigan. Wait, is there another Mary Bonnell in the United States? Mary, Mary. Okay, weird. Donald J. Trump for president. Donald J. Trump for president. Nine cents, mom, what the fuck? 
Win red, win red, win red. Eli Crane for Congress. Can I find out her total donos to Donald Trump? I wonder if you can sort through that. Year to date, $857 to Donald Trump. That's this year. Jesus, mom. Oh, true. She probably just typoed. Because she donated nine cents here, and then the next day she donated, or then, then a couple weeks later she donated nine dollars. She probably just meant to donate nine dollars. Okay, sorry. Back to this. Okay. Donations? Yes. You know when they look at donations by, from a company? If a company donates nine, literally 99% of all donations, or to Democrats. Does that strike you as a left-leaning or a right-leaning Oh, you company? mean the company donated. I understand what you're and saying. What I'm trying to tell you is that uh, Twitter employees, people at Twitter, their political donations were 99%, literally 99% uh, to Democrats. That's obviously an extremely left-leaning group. My question to leading into this is about MAGA. You, and speaking of MAGA, you recently met with Donald Trump in Florida. What did you guys talk about? Uh, I was at a dinner, I, I was not done, I was at a breakfast at a friend's place and Donald Trump came by, that's it. So you didn't go there to meet him? I, no, I went to a, a, a friend of mine's house uh, and it said, it said Donald Trump's coming by for breakfast, is that, uh, just so you know, like, okay, fine. What'd you discuss? I've, I don't, <laughs> um, let's just say uh, I, he did most of the talking. What <laughs> what Just, it, and, and the, the, the normal things he says. There was nothing particularly gra 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 groundbreaking on you, but uh, he. It's an interview, dog. You know, uh, President Trump likes to talk, and so he talked. I, I, I don't recall him saying anything that he hasn't said publicly, uh, and that was it. it. Was just a breakfast. Did he ask you for money? He's like petrified of like giving an answer that's gonna get clipped. He's like thinking in TikTok terms right now. I'm gonna say something that's gonna up. He didn't. Did he ask you for a donation? No. He didn't. No. You said you're not gonna donate to any candidate. That's correct. Why not? I think, uh... Well, I'll voice my opinion. Um, I think, uh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna put uh, a thumb on the scale monetarily uh, that uh, is, you know, significant. You voicing your opinion is going to be far more significant than the FEC $5,500 maximum donation limit you can make or whatever. Bro, what do you mean? Are you going to loan him money to help pay his bills? No. Not at all? Pay his legal bills? I'm not, I'm not paying, paying his legal bills in any way, shape, or form. And he did not ask you for money? And he did not ask me for money. Are you going to, so you're not going to endorse a candidate? I may, in the final stretch, endorse a candidate, uh, <laughs> but I don't know yet. Uh, I, I want to make a con I want to I want to analyze all the facts and then make a good decision based on how I feel at the end. Come on, bro. The candidate, uh, but I don't know yet. Uh, I, I want to make a considered decision uh, before the election, uh, and if I do decide to endorse a candidate, then I will explain exactly why. Are you leaning towards anyone? No, you're not leaning towards anyone. Because you've been... Well, I'm sure I'm leaning, leaning away from Biden. You're leaning away? <laughs> <laughs> I've made no secret of that. Are you concerned about losing... Why does Destiny hate him so much? Elon Musk? Because Elon Musk is a largely influential figure in politics, and he shouldn't be. He's an idiot when it comes to anything political or outside of the, like, the very near... Even in tech, he's an idiot. Uh, because he thinks that he can make comments on everything. He thinks he's like an expert of AI and an expert of computer engineering. He thinks he's an expert in every single... Field. He has no humility because he's a billionaire and because he's had two really awesome and successful companies, he thinks it makes him an expert on everything. And generally when he opens his mouth about literally anything outside of stuff related to Tesla or SpaceX, it's, just, it's the dumbest shit you've ever heard in your entire life. <laughs> <laughs> I've made no secret of that. Are you concerned about losing your security clearance that Biden is reelected? Does that have anything to do with it? No. You are leaning away from Biden, but you're not going to endorse anyone. It seems like an endorsement of President Trump because there are only two people who are running now. Nikki Haley is out. I mean, a lot could happen between out. now and the election. So yeah. we'll see who in the final analysis uh, are the choices for president. Um, and at that point, I may or may not endorse 
uh, one of the candidates. If I do, I will provide a very uh, detailed explanation of why I, I am endorsing one. What do you think radicalized him? Wasn't he the opposite of this a few years ago? I don't even know if I'd call him radicalized. For a lot of people, if you get um, if you get bullied by somebody and you don't have strong political views or foundations, it's easy for you to switch your political beliefs completely. And that's what happened to Elon. He got bullied by some left-leaning people, and then he's like, oh, well, f I'm going to go as far as possible. And that's it. It's just He's just defined like as a reactionary. That's why when you ask him really basic political questions, he has no answers to anything. You would imagine that like, oh, shit, like you run one of the largest social media platforms in the world, a whole bunch of political news happens on your platform, you might have some very insightful or interesting things to say. Like even Jack had some relatively insightful or interesting things to say when it came to like controlling misinformation on the platform and putting your thumb on the scale of elections and everything. Um, but Elon is just nothing. I don't know if there's people around him that make decisions or what, but. At that point, might you contribute or donate? Uh, I, I think it's unlikely. So you have been posting up a storm as you always do in the past couple of weeks about the redesign <laughs> of the Tesla uh, Roadster coming at the end of this year. Are there any kind of updates that you can talk about that, uh, to expect from your flagship EV? I mean, Tesla stock is down. Elon is left wing, hate to break it to you. Elon is left wing in what sense of the word? What? He's an anti-establishment, he's just an anti-establishment guy. He just hates anything relating to any establishments. Like you could print all of his opinions based on that. On the last six months, what's next for the company? You know, the stocks go up and down, but what really matters is are we making and delivering uh, a, a great products? Uh, the, the Tesla products are um, outstanding. Uh, last year, the model Tesla Model Y was the best-selling uh, car of any kind in the world. So it was about 1.2 million units. It was the best-selling car despite being, I think, around 50% more expensive than the next. Is it just me or do give off hardcore, just pearly things vibes? Yeah. In units. It was the best-selling car despite being, I think, around 50% more expensive than the next best-selling vehicle um, of any kind, not just electric. So um, I think this, that's a testament to the incredible work of the Tesla team. Yeah. Um, and uh, we launched the Cybertruck, obviously. That's uh, being very well received. Um, we have... Uh, He's a lifelong Democrat who thinks leftists are dragging the party to shitville. Voted Biden in 2000. He might have voted Biden in 2000. I don't know if he did or not. I'd be interested to see a link in that. But it was then it was probably just over the COVID period where people bully him or you'd see weird shit and your brain just gets fucking fried. There's no world where you've got like left-leaning principled positions and you support uh, explicitly or implicitly a guy like Donald Trump. It's just, it's totally incompatible. Um, 2020, I said 2000, sorry, 2020. Um, yeah, it's, he just, he either never had strong positions or, or he lied, I guess, I don't know. I think over a million orders for the Cybertruck. Um, so uh, it's, it's a really special product. That is, that is, I think the Cybertruck is one of those product that, products that come, come. Is Glenn Greenwald a left winger? Glenn is probably anti-establishment left leaning guy, I think. Left winger, I would imagine, yeah. Um, there is either a red wave this November or America is doomed. Imagine four more years of this getting worse. Wow, like very, very left, very left wing here. Comes along really once in several years, maybe once a decade. A Cybertruck is a once a decade product. It is so uh, special and, and I think it's our best product, um, so. But everyone improves over time. I mean, Apple, I thought my phone was here, but Apple, you know, the phone got better over time. I'm sure the, your, your cars will get better over time. You have been tweeting about the, the updates in, in the roasters. Is there something that we yeah, should Yeah, yeah, sure, you did mention the roasters. So, um, like, I don't want to give away you know, much more than what I've said uh, publicly, except that the Roadster will be uh, a collaboration between SpaceX and Tesla. So, you know, you can expect some rockety stuff there. Um, a flying car? Maybe. <laughs> it's not out of the question. Go on. No, I, I, like, I, gotta, I gotta reserve the cool stuff for the, you know, okay. when we actually unveil it. But, um, Destiny, Elon said, CNN is generally considered left. Then Elon was asked, why do you say that? The question was not asking why Elon thinks CNN is left. It's asking why he thinks people consider it left. He thinks that because of media polls. He was viewing it from a different perspective than you, but his answer is perfectly rational. Listen, my dude, I love you. I appreciate you, okay? You have autism. It's okay. There's a lot of people that have autism. It doesn't mean that you're gonna die or anything, but like, 
Make sure that when you're operating in social situations, you figure out how to navigate conversations because you, my friend, okay, are autistic as f If somebody says, CNN is generally considered left, why do you think that? Well, I think that because the polls say that. So that means that's what people generally think. That's not what's being asked at all. I don't know how you can possibly think that. This is, I don't know what I'd have to change. I think they're messing around. Sorry, here's like some of these we got. This is, if we're using the window like this, this is way, 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 way too bright. Also the background apartments, I think just look bad here. It's not good. Like I, don't, I would never even want to use the window in this shot ever. It just looks gross. Um, I haven't been, I, I was down there a couple days ago and we were messing with stuff, but I haven't gone down to like all the camera settings, but I, they're, like the background with the window looks really nice but it has to be lit properly. And I don't know if that's gonna be possible. So like this was, when I had the wide angle down there and it requires a different position, but like there's so much cool shit back here. This is a darker shot, so it needs more lighting and adjustment. But like, there's a lot of like cute, cool shit back here that I think looks very dynamic and interesting for, um, but you would have to, the f-stop needs to be set better to blur this in the background a bit. Um, and then you'd have to change, I don't know if you can, I don't know how, if you could light this while fighting with the background or not. But like something like this, I think would be interesting. It just needs to be blurrier in the background and then the front subject needs to be a little more, but I don't know, we'll figure it out. Uh, they'll figure it out. Or I'll figure it out. <laughs> Okay. It's 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 gonna it's gonna be really, uh, 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 uh. it's not out of the question. Go on. No, I, I, like, I gotta I gotta reserve the cool stuff for the you know when, when we actually unveil it. But, but it's 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 gonna it's gonna be really cool. It's gonna have um, it's gonna have some rocket technology in it. Um, I think the really the only way to do something that's cooler than the Cybertruck is is to combine the uh, SpaceX and, 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 and Tesla technology to create something that's not even really a car. Then what would it be? Something that's never existed before. Wow. I'm getting Jetsons vibes. Totally Jetsons vibes. It'll, it'll, uh, and and I, the witness may not be aware, like some things that I have said publicly is that it'll do zero to 60 in under one second. So um, that's by far faster than any, uh, you know, sports car that, that exists. Um, and, um, and that's not even the most exciting thing about it. Does it have wings? No, it does, it does not have big wings, because big wings would be unwieldy on the road. Does it have propellers? <laughs> it does not have propellers. Okay. It has wheels. It does have wheels. Okay. <laughs> it rose for 20 questions. It has a, does it have a steering wheel? Not exactly. What is it? it well, it'll have, it'll have a drive-by wire uh, yoke, essentially, like a, kind of like the way aircraft or modern jets are controlled. And do you think it's a way of the future that everyone will follow your lead on this? I don't think anyone will ever make anything like the, uh, the, the road through that, that we're gonna make. Let's talk now about um, SpaceX, Tesla. You got a lot of lawsuits, you've got X.com, you got a lot going on. How do you relax? Well, um, I relax. I spend time with my kids, my friends, and I, you know, make somewhat of a nerd technologist. Till I, I like playing video games, so uh, I'll play video games with, with with friends online. Which one? I mean, lately, I've been playing Diablo, um, and um, but I've played almost all the games over the years. Uh, a long time ago, I was like semi-pro good at Quake. This is really dating me uh, because we're talking about like one twenty-five years ago. <laughs> I don't know video games. I just know that my, uh, my great nephew loves Fortnite and some other stuff. He's always yeah. with the headphones and, and doing the thing. So that helps you relax, right? So you, you, yeah. This is, and, you, it's, and the nice thing is if you've, got fr if you've got friends in different cities and they're playing the same game, you can both go online at the same time and uh, play the game together even though you're in different cities. Listen, I'm not asking you anything that anyone else hasn't asked you about um, 
your controversial stuff that you tweet. You post a lot of controversial stuff. Is that considered blowing off steam? Um, well, I, I guess I do en enjoy using the platform. I mean, I do call um, the X platform the, the PVP or player versus player uh, platform. Um, <laughs> so in video games, there's... Uh, have you seen the Frozen Meal versus DoorDash discourse on Twitter? No, I have not. A platform. Um, so in video games, there's uh, player versus like environment, um, where you're not playing against other people, um, and then there's PvP, which is like hardcore. You're actually playing against other people, and. Uh, so, but that's blowing off steam for you. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it is to some degree. Not always. I mean, obviously, I use it for. Uh, to post jokes, to post, uh, you know, sometimes trivia, uh, sometimes things that are of great importance. Uh, so you do a lot of it at night, like late at night. So when you're doing this, are you are you sober when you do it? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? What kind of question is that? <laughs> so when you're doing, he's trying to get another weed smoking moment. This are you are you sober when you do it? I, I almost always, Are you yes. Under the influence of anything? Uh, no, I don't. I don't drink. I don't really. No, I. No. So you got no drink, no smoke, no nothing. I mean, you smoke pot with Rogan. I had one puff. Yeah. I think anyone who smokes pot can tell I don't know how to, how to smoke pot. But you've admitted that you've had you have a ketamine prescription. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's that for? Well, a ketamine prescription. Damn. Well, I mean, it's pretty private to ask somebody about a medical prescription. You know. Um. Yeah. But uh, it's, I think it's, it's something I'd say like, uh, th there are times when I have um, sort of, uh, I don't know. Is there a FDA recognized use for ketamine right now as a prescription? I, I know they were, they were trialing it for what? Was it anxiety or depression? Um, ketamine prescription. There's one that's, it's approved for, it's, it's FDA approved or it's just like, um, Oh, it is. I mean, it's garnered increasing. No, 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 originally, no, 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 no. Approved. It's the first ketamine derived medication, Spravato, as a Schedule Three controlled substance for treatment resistant depression in 2019. It was 20 years of clinical research that produced varied and complicated results. Oh. I like a, a negative chemical state in my in my brain. I uh, like depression. I guess you know is or or, or like. Depression that's not linked to any negative views, um, and, and and then uh, ketamine is helpful for uh, getting getting one outside out of a negative frame of mind. Well, listen. So I, 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 in fact, I generally you know, obviously I'm not a doctor, but I would say uh, if someone has depression issues, they should consider talking to their doctor about ketamine instead of SSRIs. Listen, I, I think that um, <laughs> ketamine. Okay. Uh, and drugs. To be fair, SSRIs do sound like they suck shit. Ah, uh, you know what? I'd co sign that statement. Fuck SSRIs. Therapy is uh, increasingly becoming more in the mainstream. Yeah. Do you think you're doing it under a doctor's care, right? Yeah, yeah. Literally a prescription from an actual, a real doctor, not like, you know. Yeah. But do you, um, do you feel like you ever abuse it? I don't think so. If you use too much ketamine, you can't really get work done. Yeah. So I have a lot of work. So I'm, I'm typically putting in like, you know, 16 hour days. That's normal for me. And it's, it's, it's rare for me to even take off a weekend day. So I don't really have like, you know, a situation where I can be not mentally acute for an extended period of time. Like I can't, it's, I can't really get wasted with, when, uh, cause I can't get my work done. So how often do you take it? Um, well, it's, it'd be like a, a small amount once every other week or something like that. But there's, I mean, it's not on the bottle where it says, take this still. <laughs> Damn, Lemon is mining for some drug abuse here. Post this many times a week or whatever, if it's yeah, not a doctor's the, dose. And I, I, it's, there, there are several weeks will go by where I don't use it. You don't use it. Yeah, I think it's just, it, like I said, I think the, the, the what I find kind of an, is if you, if you have like literally like a chemical state in your brain. Just as a quick thing, every single person in kicking YouTube chat that's getting so
mad about these medical questions, keep in mind that every single one of these guys would be cheering if there was an intense like 60 minutes interview with Biden and they were asking him intense and extreme questions about his health. And they would have a whole set of rationalizations for why that's actually A-OK -okay and it's important we need to know the health of the president, we need to know all these things and blah, 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 blah. But for somebody like Elon Musk, who might be the singular individual who has the most power over like news related media in the United States, potentially at the moment, they don't care about any of that. Just remember that, okay? When you see all these people who are asked mad about it, they would love the same questions to be aimed at any Democrat or uh, Mark Zuckerberg or anything else, just as a heads up. That you can't, you can't just think yourself out of, then uh, ketamine can ha is helpful for getting you out of a depressive mind state. You suffer from depression or you have a depressive mind state? And I asked you as someone who has suffered from depression. I wouldn't say that I, I, I wouldn't say that I have a, a, a case of like extended depression. Um, it's just once in a while, I get into a, ne a negative sort of chemical mind state, once in a while. It's not a, not a common thing, um, but once in a while it does happen. Where do you think that comes from? I think it's just genetic, basically. Do you think it's just genetic history? I think so. Um, yeah. I mean, some people are just wired, wired to be happy all the time. Uh, some are unfortunately wired to be sad a lot of the time. Um, and in my case, uh, I'm, you know, I'm generally pretty, pretty positive and optimistic. Uh, but once in a while, uh, I don't know what happens to some, uh, like I said, I think it's just a chemical tie to your brain once in a while. It's like a brain storm. Yeah. Do you ever worry that this may get in the way of your government contracts and clearances? And, and also, no. and, and Wall Street as well. Well, from a standpoint of Wall Street, uh, what matters is uh, execution. You know, uh, are you building value for investors? Um, Tesla is worth uh, about as much as the rest of the car industry combined from nothing. So, I, you know, that's pretty good. Um, as I mentioned, we, ha we had the best selling car on Earth last year. Um, so from an investor standpoint, if there is something I'm taking, I should keep taking it. Don deserved to get dropped by Elon for this, honestly. So I understand for a lot of you guys, you, like you use to social media or you don't know what a good interview is or whatever, but like these are probing, these questions are uncomfortable and they're probing, but this is a singular man that controls a whole bunch of information relating to how we consume and process media in today's world, right? He's also one of the wealthiest men on the planet. Asking probing questions relating to drug abuse or asking probing questions relating to state of mind, especially stuff that he tweets himself. He's tweeted about this ketamine shit. He's tweeted about all of his, all this, but is completely and totally fair. He doesn't want to answer the question. He's within his right to say, like, I don't want to go down this line of question. That's fine. But to pretend like Don needs to stay away from things that are uncomfortable, uh, I'm sorry. Grow the fuck up. This guy is a fucking billionaire that has more control over media than 99.99% of all of people in all of human history. It's a fair line of questioning. Like, if, if the guy that was running Twitter was going down K holes every, you know, every fucking two days, and playing video games all night and all this shit. I would want to know that. I think that's I think that's newsworthy, media worthy attention. Uh, you can get asked mad about it, and feel like it's insincere or, or not nice or whatever the fuck. But again, billionaire guy runs a media company. This is the type of uh, this is the type of um, uh, digging through analysis. There's a word I'm looking for that you would expect. <clears throat> He owns one media company. You're being so hyperbolic. Hey, buddy, sorry, those were his, wor his words, not mine. He said that Twitter was, I said one of the, he said Twitter was the most important company on the planet for breaking news, or for news in general. I think he said it was the most. What, was, what were the words that he used? We're at 23 minutes picked up where conservative media, some conservative media has left off, um, that moving to the right, increasingly becoming part of a conservative dialogue, sometimes even conspiracy theories, right? There was an article recently written about you saying that you, Donald Trump, and X were the most important. No, it wasn't this, fuck. What, he said it earlier, I think. He said it earlier, because I remember I was gonna object, but then I was like, for breaking news, actually, it, or for news, it might be because more people do it. I can't find it right now. I'm, I'm not gonna just go back there. Listen, they were his words, okay? Somebody else can go find it. That's the If there is something I'm taking, I should keep. So it'd be fair for Don to interview Biden in the same manner. Sure. Yeah, Biden's the president of the United States. Yeah, leaders and these people get asked pretty tough questions depending on where they go. Yeah, it happens. Yes. Thank you. Have you? You talk about your ketamine use and depression. Have you? 
you also have said, and the, the reason I, sh I should say, like, like the reason I mentioned uh, the, the ketamine prescription on the X platform was because I thought maybe this is something that could help other people. That's why I mentioned it. Yeah. Can we talk about the great replacement theory now? Um, some of the things that you post, the great replacement theory, you claim that Democrats, President Biden's immigration plan to open up the border. You said that they're, the president is getting and Democrats are doing it to get more votes. Um, 255, wait. 2330, that's So it is the one, yeah, uh, the number one way that people actually are informed about any kind of news, meaning real time events, is uh, on the X platform, formerly Twitter. Um, there, fuck you. He said it. Okay, sorry. Can we talk about the great replacement theory now? Um, some of the things that you post, the great replacement theory, you claim that Democrats, President Biden's immigration plan to open up the border. You said that they're, the president is getting, and Democrats are doing it, to get more votes. Um, but undocumented immigrants cannot vote in federal elections, so how is that possible? Right. Um, well, you're conflating two things. One is great replacement theory. Uh, the other is, which I, I don't subscribe to that. I'm simply saying that there is an incentive here. Uh, if uh, legal immigrants wish, I think, have a a very strong bias to, at least everything I've read, it's a very strong bias to vote Democrat. Um, Do you say legal or illegal immigrants? Which I, I don't subscribe to that. I'm simply saying that there is an incentive here. Uh, if uh, legal immigrants wish, I think- have Legal, I don't, I don't know what the fuck he's saying. Legal, le legal, illegal, legal? There is an incentive here. Uh, if uh, legal immigrants wish, I think have a, right. a very strong bias to at least everything I've read, it's very strong bias to vote Democrat. Um, the the more, more that come into the country, the more they're likely to vote uh, in that direction. But it, it is, in my view, uh, an, the, a simple incentive to increase uh, voters to Democrat voters. Um, I, and yeah, so the so question is like how? So there's, there's, a, few, there's a, a few ways of, uh, that this works. One is that uh, when the census is done, uh, the census is based on all, all people in an area, whether they are citizens, citizens or not. So uh, if there are a concentration of uh, people who came here illegally in, in, a, in a particular state or uh, in a particular state, that state will actually then get uh, an increased number of house seats. So the, the house seat apportionment is proportionate to the number of people, not the number of citizens. So the, 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 the illegals overwhelmingly go to Places like California, New York, um, and the if you just look at the, look at the math, if, if if you look at the apportionment with and without illegals, I believe California would lose. I believe I believe the blue state there would be a net loss of blue states of approximately twenty seats in the House. Uh, this also applies to the the electoral college. So you say like, well, this also applies to to electing the president, because the the, the same the electoral votes are also done. By, by apportionment the same way that house seats are done. But the reason- Is he wrong? He sounds reasonable here, what am I missing? Uh, no, he's technically right. Harkness loves you, thanks for the $10. This interview is long because Junior can't s -s -s stop, etc. Good one. Uh, he's just, he's repeating, these are like the conservative memes that are floating around now, is how the goal is for Democrats to use illegal immigrants to boost their representation in the house in order to, um, in, in order to um, get more house votes. The funny thing is though, is I'm pretty sure even if you take into account illegal immigrants, Republicans still enjoy a structural advantage in the House because of the way that it's not necessarily a portion directly proportional to the population. Now, a counter response to that would be like, okay, sure, but at least that's like a constitutionally mandated process for how it's a portion. Illegal immigrants are kind of like a loophole to that, which is fine too. You, that would be a decent counter. But then you can also say that, um, uh, one is you'd have to prove that Democrats are trying to let illegals into the country, which even though Republicans say that over and over again, I don't think that's, I don't think there's any strong evidence for that, number one. Um, and then um, number two, you can also argue the flip side of this to where, okay, well, then Republicans aren't incentivized to have good stances on immigration. If you're claiming Democrats just want more immigrants because they'll vote blue, then what is the contrapositive to that? Uh, Republicans just want less immigrants because it, because they would vote for them. Like, so is everybody's stance on immigration policy just coming down to who they think they'll be likely voters for? It's just it's a little reductionist, but that's how conservatives view the world. To be whatever. Then, Elon, the electoral college is in place is to 
to balance that is so that that doesn't happen. So what you're saying about it is the exact opposite of the reason yeah. why the, the Electoral College is there. The Electoral College at this point, it, at this point in, in our history, gives people who are in smaller states and red states much more of an influence over our elections than people who are in blue states and the majority of the people in this country. That's what the Electoral College does. It actually does the exact opposite of what you're saying. It protects people who are in smaller states and protects people who are in red states. Well, um, the red I, states I, because I, they tend I, to I, be I smaller think, and, and think, less populous. I think that that's, that's, that statement is, is uh, what, what you said is, is true, but what I said is also true, uh, which is that uh, if Why ignoring the fact that Dems want to give amnesty? I mean, amnesty is the amnesty is like the only reasonable path forward. It just has to be that. I mean, there's, you're not deporting 15 million people from the United States. Uh, if, as is the case, a disproportionate number of legal immigrants go to uh, blue states, they amplify. Destiny is the opposite. The Senate represents less populous states more robustly because it's representation irrespective of population. No, the, the Senate is more egregious, but the House of Representatives also represents smaller states more as well, proportionately compared to the population of a state, given how many representatives you have. It's not as egregious as the Senate, obviously, but even the House disproportionately represents um, smaller states. By the effect of a, of a blue state vote. And the math, as I understand it, you can research this obviously very easily on there. It's, it's like it's, it's pretty straightforward to, to, to research this. Are there 15 million of those? I said 15. Sorry, 15. But my understanding is that there would be, uh, that, that the, the Democrats would lose approximately 20 seats in the House uh, if illegals were not counted in the census. And that's also 20 less electoral votes for president. So the illegals absolutely do affect the, the uh, who controls. I don't think Elon's claims of net 20 seats is true. I'm seeing five seats. Yeah, I don't even know how much. I don't, I, again, all of this stuff is usually passed around in Republican meme, like memes, like image memes and shit. So I, I don't know how much of this is true or not or what would actually change. Um, I haven't looked at, to that. Uh, the, House of, the House and who controls uh, the presidency. It does not affect uh, the Senate. Yeah. In blue states, you're talking about. I yes. don't believe that your information on, on uh, that is right. Um, so listen, the, let's talk more about the Great Replacement because the first time that you did, you posted on X about uh, this Jewish conspiracy, you ended up apologizing. I didn't call it a, a conspiracy. I, I just said that there's a simple matter of incentives. You don't need a conspiracy when you have basic incentives. In my view, there's a basic incentive that is fundamental uh, that uh, for, for the Democrat, Democrat Party to foster and, and usher in a large number of illegals. Yeah. And, they, and, and, and you don't need a conspiracy in that case because you have a very basic incentive you could this is a true point, that if somebody's claiming a conspiracy theory, um, this is the only reasonable way to point to some bad things happening on a larger scale that nobody's being intentional about, is if you look at a long chain of incentives, you can find bad behavior that isn't necessarily a result of a conspiracy, it's just every individual actor who's incentivized to do a particular thing. Um, like 2007, the housing market crash wasn't a big conspiracy, it was every single individual actor along the step from mortgage to CDO derivatives all had their individual incentives to play their role in the, yeah in the big crash. Destiny will shout when someone says he's wrong and not say way yet he didn't hear he should. Okay. Destiny, I feel like you do this with respect to, um, uh, conspiracies all the time though, sorry. Why has no one leaked? Well, no, because those conspiracies the, usually the people that um, those conspiracies are talking about aren't ones that would be explained rationally by just individual incentivized actors. They usually require some extraordinarily anti-American or evil action. So like forcing somebody to approve a drug that they know is harmful or forcing somebody to uh, attack or kill fellow Americans like in 9-11 or forcing somebody to uh, contravene U.S. law to the detriment of the average American. Like these usually, once you get into that line uh, of thinking, you don't have obvious incentives. You need a conspiracy to explain say I'm wrong about that incentive, but that's my view. I, I'm not uh, buying into, I didn't, uh, buying some great replacement theory. I'm simply saying there appears to be a very clear incentive for uh, uh, Democrats to have, to maximize the number of illegals um, because it helps them win elections. I'm talking about- Destiny, you are biased to disbelieve conservative memes, so you shouldn't speak on this. Uh, I don't get any of my media or news from memes. So yeah, I am biased against conservative memes. I'm biased against liberal memes too. I try not to live in, in in pictures on the internet to define my entire political outlook. To have to maximize the number of illegals um, because it helps them win elections. I'm talking about the great replacement theory is also part of a Jewish conspiracy theory. And when you 
You did the tweet, or you responded to the tweet about that. You ended up apologizing, and which I think is, you know, it's good that you ended up apologizing. You went to Auschwitz with Ben Shapiro. Yeah. Right? So you said you learned your lesson. What did you learn? I said I learned my lesson. You said you learned your lesson when it, when you apologized, and you said you went to Auschwitz. You saw what. Why don't you look into this then, bro? We'll spend a day research some brain development shit. What is there to look into? The, the U.S. Census will count, I'm pretty sure, every single person in a particular area, even if they're not a citizen. So if you're an illegal immigrant and you fill out the U.S. Census, uh, you might be counted in an area, and then House votes, and then consequently, I think EC votes will be apportioned to uh, states at a higher level than they would be. That's factually true. I just don't know if the number 20 is right. There's, what is there to look into there? That's just a factually true statement. I don't know, like, the amount. Also, I don't know how that would affect literally any part of my policy or any other thing, too. If you want, do you want to change it so that only citizens are counted towards, or only citizens and residents are counted towards apportioning House votes? I'd probably agree with that. No, we should just do that then. Boom. There you go. Problem fucking solved. This isn't, like, a huge issue. The problem is, you don't think this is a thing that wants, you want to fix. This isn't a thing that you actually give a fuck about. You don't actually give a fuck about any of these problems. You don't want to change the way that uh, House representation is done. You don't want to change the way Electoral College representation is done. You're just using this as a wedge issue to fight against brown people or immigrants because you don't fucking like it for whatever fucking retarded reason you have for not liking immigrants, right? That's it, right? So we just talk about immigration. That's why I focus on immigration, not on changing the way that House seats are apportioned to a fucking state, retard. What? when you apologized and you said you went to- What do we even, where do most, how many illegal immigrants live in Texas? Okay. Illegal immigrant population in each state. Do we even know if like illegal immigrants are, are favoring like blue states for house apportionment at all anyways? So we've got a ton in Florida, 775,000, a ton in Georgia. Obviously a fuck ton in California, a ton in Texas. Um, <clears throat> U.S. is, oh, this is working on the overall estimate of 10 million. If, if you were to add up like both sides of this to look at like red and blue states, does it say it here? Is, is there even a, This is from 2020. I'm removing unauthorized immigrants from census statistics that affect house reapportionments. It's the first census of the U.S. since 1790. Counts include both citizens and to be used to apportion seats in the House of Representatives, which states gaining or losing based on population. If unauthorized immigrants in the U.S. were removed, the 2020 census apportionment count, um, which is what I seeks to do. Three states could lose a seat. Three states could lose a seat they otherwise would have had, and three others each could gain one, according to a Pew Research Center analysis based on government records. If unauthorized immigrants were excluded from the apportionment count, California, Florida, and Texas would each end up with one less congressional seat than they would have been awarded based on population changes alone. So this is showing California losing one and Florida and Texas. So it sounds like according to this, well, let's see who would gain. Um, California would lose two seats instead of one. Wait, okay. If unauthorized immigrants were excluded from the apportionment count, California, Florida, and Texas would each end up with one less congressional seat than they would have been awarded based on population change alone. California would lose two seats instead of one. Florida would gain one instead of two. Texas would gain two instead of three. According to analysis. Oh, so this is working off of a reapportionment that already happened, basically. So California would have lost an extra seat. Florida would have gained one instead of two, and Texas would gain two instead of three. Wait, why is this mind fucking me so hard? Okay, if unauthorized immigrants were excluded, California would lose an extra seat Florida would gain one instead of two. Doesn't that mean Florida's losing a seat and Texas gaining two instead of three? Oh no, instead of, Never mind. I'm understanding it. Okay. Wait, so this makes it sound like the illegal immigrants are favoring the Republican house right now. How we did this. Alabama, Minnesota, and Ohio would each hold on to a seat that they would have lost. Cato thingy on immigration. Okay, so. This 2020 thing seems to show that. Uh, 
apportionment and immigration. This is from 2024, January 24th. 25% of non-citizen growth went to GOP states since 2019. Non-citizen growth is a bit sneaky because residents would be included in that, right? Restricting immigration. We're not really talking about non-citizens. We're talking about illegal immigrants. So this is about 62% of the 3 million increase in the total immigration population March 2019, 2023 is occurred in GOP states. Non what about non-citizens who might be excluded by uh, For them, an overly 95% of the increase in the non-citizen population has been in GOP states in March 2019 to March 2023, eliminating the growth in the non-citizen population. 2019, 2023 would have cost Republican states 1.2 million people or about two seats in Congress. Oh, so this is this analysis is the same, showing the same as the... Okay, wait, who... Destiny is purposely looking at 2020. I'm just being linked... You're retarded. Literally, God, holy fuck. Where is Jacob? Help me find what I need for the AR-15. I'm ready for the Civil War. I don't want to share a country with you fucking retards. Holy shit. I, I'm getting linked stuff and I'm reading into it now. And now you're mad because it doesn't agree with your preconceived notions. You got a fucking pictures on Twitter? Well, this is twenty two. This argument was published in 2024, two months ago. Is that how long you've been fucking edging? Is that why you're so angsty in my fucking chat? Jesus Christ. When was the last fucking census? Isn't the census like every, is it four years? How often? U.S. census. Every 10 years. The last one was 2020, you fucking moron. What, what? Don't tell me to look into something if you're going to be mad if I don't find the answer that you want to see. Christ, my bad. Link me a fucking picture next time, okay? Holy shit. You, Auschwitz. You learned your lesson. What did you learn? I said I learned my lesson. You said you learned your lesson when it, when you apologized and you said you went to Auschwitz you saw what would... No, I was already, already aware of, of, of these things. And the nature of my comment that, that really inflamed people, um, what, I was tr what I was trying to say, and I did very quickly clarify, this is what I'm saying, is that uh, um, a number of uh, prominent uh, Jewish philanthropists fund uh, groups that they should really take a closer look at funding because some of the, some of the groups they fund, um, I think, are anti-Semitic. Yeah. Do you understand the connection between the two? There one, there's a connection between you said Democrats, a great replacement theory, but when it comes to the actual great replacement theory, originally it was started about Jewish people, as you said, flooding the country, months, yeah. and then now people are using it for Democrats, saying the same thing about Democrats. Flooding, in my view, it's a simple matter of incentives. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I, don't, I actually don't see an incentive for uh, Jewish people to want to have any illegal immigration. I don't, I don't think there is such an incentive. The great replacement theory is a, a neo-Nazi trope it's in the neo-Nazi manifesto. It's in the Turner Diaries. It's referenced by the Buffalo mass shooter uh, in his manifesto where 10 people, um, black people were murdered in Buffalo. His actual title of the Christchurch Shooters Manifesto, 51 people in the Muslim mosque were murdered, 23 people uh, murdered in El Paso by a shooter who used the same language that you use in that manifesto when you say Hispanic invasion. You want Trump, the next guy will be much worse? No, he won't be. Trump is especially stupid. And you guys have no principles or whatever the fuck on Trump anyway. So in four years, you'll have forgotten about Trump. All of you will pretend it was some cringe shit. You'll all pretend like you didn't support him. You move on to the next whatever dipshit conservative there is to support. 100%. Is that not? I didn't say an Hispanic invasion. And you tweeted, you quoted a tweet that said, that called it a Hispanic invasion. <laughs> if I quote something, it doesn't mean I agree with anything ever. God, it's so, this is so boring. Like, you're never gonna hear Elon Musk say something like, God, that was such a good point. It's so insightful. Like, compared to any other person that could be speaking about anything in media, Elon is the most boring, like, basic, like, baser instinct, like, copy-pasted Republican bot that posts on social media. It's every single bot-like opinion you could ever imagine from somebody. There's not gonna be a single insightful or surprising thing he says in this entire conversation. That called it a Hispanic invasion. <sighs> if I quote something, it doesn't mean I agree with anything ever the image. Brilliant. This is something that I want. I think this is something worth people should Brilliant. Uh, consider. Why would you quote something that you didn't believe? Because anything I quote is going to have a whole range of statements. It doesn't mean I agree with everything in it. Do you think if there, if, if you moderated yourself more, if there was better content moderation on the platform, that you wouldn't have to answer these questions from reporters about the great, great replacement theory as it relates I to I don't Democrats, have to answer these questions. Great replacement theory as it relates to Jewish people. Do you think that? I don't have to answer questions from reporters. Don, the only reason I'm doing this interview is because you're on the X platform and you asked for it. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, I would not do interview with this interview. <laughs> what a hack thing to say. Christ.
I'm just trying to promote my shit. Like that is also telling. And it was the same thing with the Twitter files as well, right? Like I'm only doing this to make me and my platform look good. I don't actually give a f about any of the underlying, which is also the funny thing because you conservatives will dick suck this guy and he's only here because he makes money off of you fucking morons because you're so easy to monetize because you're so predictable with your outrage and your reactions to everything that you fucking see. So you're on the X platform and you asked for it. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise I would not do an interview with this interview. So you don't think, you, do you think that you wouldn't get in trouble or you wouldn't be criticized for these things? I'm or criticized that possibly, I could care less. It, you, don't, you don't care? No, I don't Why care. not? I don't think people should care what the media thinks about them. They're terrible judges of character. Even someone who has one of the biggest social media and biggest information platforms in the world, you don't think, you don't care? You don't think that there's, you have any x.com or you have any responsibility to the truth or moderating the platform? Uh, you're conflating the truth with the, with the media and I think the media is uh, not truthful. Well, not Hold on, I'm getting too upset. I need to soy regulate my body. One sec. My DNC provided chocolate soylent, thank God. Just the, the media, I mean, just the truth in general. I, I, I care about the truth very much. That's why we have, for example, community, community notes on the YEX system, um, where uh, in order for community note to surface and uh, provide corrective information about what somebody posts, and, and my post, You've been spamming this in chat. It says illegal immigrants can now legally carry and buy weapons. I... From end wokeness, great source of information. Obama appointed federal judge Sharon Johnson Coleman just ruled that illegal immigrants have a right to carry guns. Illegal immigrant can carry guns, federal judge from the Epoch Times. Uh, firstly, number one point to your fucking retardation. The fact that you would ever link a fucking tweet that one has a picture of the black judge, nice, no dog whistling there, dipshit, uh, and doesn't even include a link to the article should be the first major indicator that you might be a fucking tool, okay? If you are taking news seriously from an account that doesn't even source you the fucking article and is linking pictures of people because they're black, you might be a fucking moron, but that's fine. We can go find the fucking article and see what it's about. Illegal immigrant can carry judge, or I'm sorry, can uh, illegal immigrants carry guns, federal judge. Okay, judge rules, legal immigrants have second, have gun rights protected by second amendment. Okay, what is the actual ruling here? Oh. A US district court judge ruled earlier this month that completely prohibiting legal immigrants possessing firearms in violation of the second amendment, the ruling issued on March 8th by Obama appointed district judge Sharon Johnson Coleman pertains to the case of illegal uh, migrant uh, Heriberto Carbajal Flores Jesus. Flores is charged under Title 18 of the U.S. Criminal Code, a measure preventing illegal uh, migrants from possessing firearms, blah, 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 had no criminal history of improper use of gun, and therefore, according to the court, did not present a public danger when exercised Second Amendment right in Chicago in 2020. It's contends that he received and used handguns solely for self-protection, protected property, blah, 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 blah. the court finds that as applied, blah, blah, Title 18 is unconstitutional. In her decision, Coleman cited the Supreme Court's ruling in New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin, which found New York State could not constitutionally prevent anyone from carrying a pistol in public. The case, she said, established a framework for analyzing whether a challenged firearm regulation violates the second amendment oof 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 the case she said okay um, the non-citizen possession statute title 18 violates the second amendment as applied to carbajal flores the judge wrote thus the court grants them a motion to dismiss courts continue to elevate the rights of, uh, to bear arms and who is responsible for illegal acts committed uh, with guns in washington earlier this month federal judge rejected a challenge to a law allowing lawsuits against gun makers the women's use improperly okay Am I missing something? Shouldn't pro Second Amendment conservatives be cheering for such a decision? I don't. I don't know the. I don't know um, personally, and I know you don't either, because you have no fucking idea. I don't know how the Constitution or constitutionally allowed things are applied to non-citizens or people that are here illegally. Um, like, if you um, if you walk up to an illegal immigrant and you murder an illegal immigrant, that would be illegal. And you couldn't challenge that. Well, they're illegal, so why do they have any rights afforded to them in this state? Constitutional rights apply to anyone under U.S. jurisdiction via the 14th Amendment, including illegal immigrants. Why did you say oof? 
Oh, because it came under an expansion of gun rights that every Republican f***ing cheered for, and now they're ass mad when it's used in a way they don't like it. Rights are for registered taxpayers. Really? Children don't have rights in the United States of America? People that don't have jobs don't have rights in the United States of America? Do you really think illegals should have a right to carry guns? It's not about what you think. The fact that you even phrase the question like that is so stupid. Do you think they should? It doesn't, um, doesn't have a, it's not about what you think. It's about what's constitutionally afforded to you. That's how the law works, you know, that thing that you guys used to care about like 10 years ago when you were the party of law and order instead of the party of insurrectionists and, and, and confederacy supporters, whatever cringe autistic shit you f***ing retards are eating now from whoever will spoon feed it to you on whatever alternative media platform you consume your shit from. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny any person. Is there a... No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge of citizens of any person. Is there a reason why they use... I, don't, I, don't, I would have to look. I would have to do a whole deep dive into understanding what the constitutional allowances are for people in this country that are not here as a citizen, that are non-residents or are illegal. I don't know the answer. You you just want to hear, I understand what your thought process is. Your thought process is illegal immigrant bad, them having gone bad, and it should be bad. Uh, but this is the law, uh, not, you know, Facebook or whatever blog spam site you read. So I, I don't know what the actual legal, I don't know if this is a good legal decision or not. I would read the underlying uh, analysis of the case. So are equally subject to this. My Ivan Phoenix community noted many times. Um, the, the law says that American citizens can own and carry guns. The Second Amendment says a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Is there some other part of the Constitution that... Uh, delineates between citizens or non-citizens or whatever in regards to what particular amendments apply to. There is a legal argument here, I just don't know it. But you don't either, so I don't know why you have such a strong fucking position on this, other than the fact that you fucking hate anything having to do with illegal immigrants. <clears throat> what is the people? We the people? I don't know. What do you mean? What is the people? Do you think the people is only citizens? You don't think residents have any rights in the United States? So it must be at least citizens and residents. What I, I don't know in terms of not... Never mind. Why am I arguing? Why am I arguing with you guys? You're right. You're totally right. You, the meme is correct. There is a picture of a meme, and that picture is correct. You got it. In order for it before, to provide corrective information about what somebody posts, and, and my posts are equally subject to this. My Ivan Phoenix community noted many times. Um, the, in order for it before, a community notes a surface. Uh, people who have historically disagreed must agree in order for a community note to surface. And all of the code for community notes is open source. All of the data is open source, so you can completely recreate it from scratch. The way to build trust is transparency. I have noticed- When you buy a gun and fill out that background check form, don't you have to say that you're a US citizen? Oh, see, that would be a good counter. Um, for the ATF forms, the 7744, what the f are these? I always forget the fucking number. Um, What the fuck is it? It's 4473. Okay. Do you have to attest to your citizenship on this form? The question I'll have after this is if you do a private sale, um, does everything have to be, when you do a private sale, do you have to make sure that somebody would have passed a 4473? I don't remember. Let me check. Okay. Okay, so this is your gun shit that you buy. Bullshit, bullshit. Okay, last name, first name, middle name, residence, place of birth or foreign country, social security number, optional, ethnicity, race, both, blah, 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 country of citizenship, other country. If you're an alien, record your US issued alien or admission number. I guess you just wouldn't have one. Are you the actual transferee slash buyer of all the firearms listed on this form? Uh, do you intend to sell or otherwise uh, you're under indictment? 
uh, or information in any court for a felony? Have you ever been convicted in any court? Are you a fugitive from justice? Are you an unlawful user of? Have you ever been adjudicated? Have you ever discharged? Arms for a subject to court order? Have you ever been convicted in any court of a misdemeanor crime? Have you ever renounced your? Oh, are you an alien illegally or unlawfully in the United States? Okay, this would be the argument then that I would be curious for how could you acquire a firearm? Because I'm, I'm pretty sure that for a private sale, um, private sale firearm pass 4473. I think even for a private sale, I think you have to be able to pass the 4473. Is an ATF form 40 percent required an unlicensed person sells or dispose of a firearm? No, it's required only for sales or dispose by license. Oh, maybe not. Wouldn't the court ruling mean that question is unconstitutional? Well, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if the 4473 is required for private sales. But can't you argue the Second Amendment overrules that? You could. But I, again, I don't know her rationale. Do we need to go and dig into this case? Oh. Destiny, this is the opinion of the Supreme Court. Aliens are only allowed the due process from the Constitution, not all the other rights. An amendment is part of the Constitution. If it is an amendment, it is part of the Constitution, just as much as any other word written in the Constitution. In fact, that's, I'm sorry, I misspoke. Uh, amendments supersede the Constitution it's in sequential order, whatever is last. The, the, so whatever amendment exists is, is going to be part of, in full force, part of the Constitution of the United States, and it will supersede whatever original text is there. Mr. Gonzalez argues that 18 U.S.C. 925 G5, which is the same statute and subsection we're dealing with, which bars unlawfully present immigrants from possessing guns is unconstitutional on its face and as applied to him. Both Bruin and the Seventh Circuit's recent decision in Atkinson compel a proper, fulsome analysis of the historical tradition supporting the statutes at issue here. Under Atkinson, the court must analyze every constitutional challenge to a firearms restriction, criminal, civil, administrative, or otherwise through the framework set out in Bruin. Nothing allows courts to sidestep Bruin in the way the government invites. In other words, the court must undertake the text and history inquiry that Bruin court so plainly announced and expounded upon at great length. Ooh, I think I'm understanding what's happening here. Wait, is Pisco available? It's, I haven't, so I haven't done the deep dive. This is that big New York case that everybody cites, right? It sounds like in this New York case, it sounds like what they basically said was, we think that a lot of the ways that states are banning firearms uh, is probably unconstitutional. So it sounds like they laid out a new test to determine the constitutionality of whether or not a particular statute or law or policy or whatever the fuck was constitutional or not. That's what it sounds like they did. And in doing so, I think in New York City, they were able to ban some of the restrictions they had on firearm owners there. But now it sounds like what, what illegal immigrants are doing is they're saying, oh, well, hold on. If we're applying this test, well, let's go historically. Has the Second Amendment um, ever been, or has the United States ever passed laws or done things to deprive illegal immigrants or unregistered citizens of their firearms? And it sounds like what the court is arguing, or rather what the plaintiffs are arguing, and, or no, I'm sorry, what the defendants are arguing and what some of the judges are agreeing with as well. If we apply this Bruin test here um, from this other court case, it doesn't seem like there's a compelling reason historically in terms of text and history to think that these citizens ought to be deprived, or I'm sorry, not citizens, these people ought to be deprived of firearm ownership. When you do a historical analysis, that's what it sounds like is, I got it, okay. When, this, when the Second Amendment's plain text covers an individual's conduct, the Constitution presumptively protects that conduct. The government must then justify its regulation by demonstrating that it is consistent with the nation's historical tradition of firearm regulation. Only then may a court conclude that the individual's conduct falls outside the Second Amendment's unqualified command. Oof, I understand. So this is like a, a little bit of a bite you in the ass, but I got it, okay. Um, hold on. So my guess is what this test is gonna look for then is when you go to court, what the defendants are gonna argue is, okay, well, hold on, okay? Constitution says that, you know, right of the people to bear arms, all right? Doesn't say only citizens, doesn't say any shit like that. So if you want to take my firearm away from it, that's fine. But show me historically where that's ever happened. Was that a matter of conversation? Did anybody talk about that around the time of the Second Amendment? The Bill of Rights, right? And if you can't show that, then it seems like you would have failed the Bruin test and the state would not have a compelling constitutional reason to deprive somebody, anybody of their right to own a firearm. That's what it sounds like. Um, okay, that's my layman's understanding of this. Does 922 G5 address a general societal problem that has persisted since the 18th century? So here's them applying that test to an illegal immigrant. 
Um, Bruin, uh, and then it's citing the, into this case. If this problem existed during a relevant historical period, it did earlier generations address it with similar or materially different means. What does history tell us about disarming those convicted of crimes generally and of felonies in particular? Among other sources, the parties could look to commentary from the founders, proposals emerging from the state's constitutional ratifying conventions, any actual practices of disarming felons or criminals more generally around the time of the founding, and treatment of felons outside of the gun context to the extent that this treatment is probative of the founders via the Second Amendment. Um, when considering historical regulations and practices, the key question is whether those regulation practices are comparable in substance to the restrictions imposed by 922G5. To answer the question, the parties should consider how the breadth, severity, and underlying rationale of the historical standards are. The, the parties uniquely. Okay, this is just that test, I think, right? Parties briefing. These are this, I think, right? Or and it's it's a, that test is applied to this particular criminal statute. The parties should freely cast a wider net and provide more detail about whatever history they rely on. They also should freely employ the... Okay, it's just... Okay. Oh, wait, fuck. The government shall file its response brief by no later than noon on September 21st, 2023, and then he... Okay, so there is no... The assessment of any gun regulation should begin with a look at the type of measure under consideration to use Professor Volokh's taxonomy. Uh, is it a what... Who, where, how, or when regulation. Once we know that, we begin to task. No, 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 no. For example, felon disarmament is a who restriction. That directs us to historical restrictions on the class of persons who are allowed to own or possess guns. In addition, one needs to look at the regulatory method that statute embodies total disarmament for life, disarmament for a term of years, qualified rights to have weapons. Throughout all of this, one must bear in mind that Bruin does not demand historical dead ringers. It is enough to identify a problem which private gun ownership and find the real. Oh, okay, okay, oh, no, 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 no. okay. Okay, sorry, back to this. Okay, so in Bruin, the Supreme Court established a framework for analyzing whether a challenged firearm regulation violates the Second Amendment. First, Bruin instructs courts to determine whether the Second Amendment's plain text covers an individual's conduct. If it does, the Congress is presumptively protected, then the government bears the burden of demonstrating, okay, so Second Amendment, we the people, blah, blah, blah. Um, this court previously held that Flores' conduct is covered by the plain text of the Second Amendment, see US, blah, blah, blah. Uh, nothing has occurred that would cause the court to depart from its prior ruling, although the Second Amendment's plain text presumptively protects firearm possession by undocumented persons. That does not end the analysis under Bruin. If the government can show that the felon dispossession statute is part of this country's historical tradition of firearm regulation, then the statute survives. Um, thus, the court will reanalyze historical tradition with Atkins' guidance. The gov government argues that the historical record establishes the uh, category of disarmed. Okay. The government argues that the historical record establishes that legislatures categorically disarmed individuals who are not members of the political community and two individuals who threatened the social order through their untrustworthiness adherence to the rule of law. Ah, so that's why they looked to see if he had a felon background or if he was a dangerous member of society, because that would have been something that the historical analysis could have lent credence to this particular re uh, regulation, possibly, right? The court recently issued opinions guided by Atkins and on identical challenges that discuss the government's uh, position regarding the untrustworthy adherence to the law historical analog. Because the government's arguments are identical in this case, this court adopts and incorporates the reasoning of those opinions as to the finding that Section 92G5 is facially constitutional, or facially constitutional. It stands to reason the court can apply its reasoning from a section where the government makes identical arguments to both. Okay, wait, hold on. The court now turns to Flores' as-applied challenge to Section 922G5 for its constitutionality. This court found that the British loyalist example in the untrustworthy adherence to the law historical analog contained an exception allowing British loyalists to sign loyalty oaths. Griffin, blah, blah, blah. This exception necessarily requires an individualized assessment to determine if the former British loyalist is so untrustworthy or dangerous that they should be barred from possessing a weapon. The court also determined that based on the government's historical analog, where exceptions were made that allowed formerly untrustworthy British loyalists to possess weapons, the individuals who fell within the exception were determined to be nonviolent uh, during their individual assessments, permitting them to carry firearms. While the analysis in Griffin was in the context of felons in possession of firearms, the court finds that the identical government arguments and analogs or and analogies are equally applicable to non-citizens unlawfully present in the country. Thus, to the extent that the exception shows that some British loyalists were permitted to carry firearms despite the general prohibition, the court interprets this history as supporting an individualized assessment for Section 922G5, as this court previously found with 922G1. The government argues that Flores is a non-citizen who is unlawfully present in this country. The court notes, however, that Flores has never been convicted of a felony, a violent crime, or a crime involving the use of a weapon. Even in the present case, Flores contends that he received and used the handguns only for self-protection and protection of property during a time of a documented civil unrest. Additionally, Bruno has confirmed that. So it's consistently. Okay, I got you. Okay.
Okay. Now that I've read it, I agree. Makes sense. Yep. Boom. Okay. Who wants? To, who wanted to fight in Cake Chat? I understand the rationale. I think it, it's probably a fair ruling. Um, undocumented immigrants have a right to own guns. Guns judge rules. This seems to be the case if you adhere to the written and historical tradition of how firearms have been regulated in the United States, and then Ooh. as per the test applied in that Bruins case. Hello. Oh, it's esports Batman. What's up? I know. I'm the the lesser, the cheaper of the two. But no, you're okay. Sorry. What's up? Do you agree or disagree? What's going on? I I agree. So what I was trying to get you to see in chat is that um, as far as the form stuff is concerned, this has been something that's already been addressed in other manners as well. Uh, Fifth Circuit overruled, I want to say, late last year on the drug question, which is super interesting, where they sat there and using the Bruin test set uh, compared it to alcohol use, where they sit there and say, yeah, historically you could deny somebody uh, a sale of a firearm if they were under the influence you wouldn't deny them the sale of a firearm just because at some point in their life they ever drank alcohol. So you're starting to see that Bruin is taking a much more nuanced look at a lot of these questions on the 4473. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it sounds like if this Bruin test, how recently was this decided? It was in the past year or two, right? Yeah. I feel like there's got to be like so dozens or hundreds of court cases now that are probably moving to reevaluate a lot of the criminal code under this new Bruin's test, would be my guess, right? Are there a lot of yes. these... Right. There, there's, there's a ton because there's the one in the Fifth Circuit. Uh, a lot of people are pointing to that because keep in mind that's what Hunter Biden was charged with, and depending on how that could settle out in a Buddhist or even in his particular district's context, mm -hmm. uh, that could erase those charges. Um, and then there's the, the broader issue of undocumented people, which is super interesting because one thing that was talked about in my circles versus. The opinion is the fact that you could potentially uh, cure that deficiency, right? So you might be here illegally, but you might later on get a visa, or you might get citizenship, or you might get some road to amnesty or something like that. Would that necessitate your, you know, your inability to own a firearm at that point? No. If that's the only thing that's really stopping you, then is that really historically what we've been concerned with? And the answer is kind of no. Hmm. So on that basis it could fail as well okay. but it's it's a whole different story but yeah i figured i'd come in and talk to you and give you kind of a broader view on that gotcha all right well i love you buddy great great uh hold on my what? discord's screwed up can you just like kick me yeah sure also <laughs> your mic is fucking horrible fix this motherfucker uh i'm on my phone on the couch right now i apologize fuck you okay bye see ya community notes i think that you are right about that and i do <sighs> okay look that only took us like an hour okay fuck you notes is open source all of the data is open source so you can completely recreate it from scratch the way to build trust is transparency i have noticed community notes i think that you are right about that and i do think community notes are helpful hey dog what's up oh okay real quick i'm gonna fly through something and you tell me my ex if i understand this or not okay sure um you're familiar with that Bruins case for New York or whatever, right? The gun kind shit? Of. Yes. Yeah. So, um, I, so I'm watching this Elon Musk interview. So every single like ass mad conservative is in my chat screaming about all these horrible things in the United States and blah, blah, blah. And one thing that was brought up recently was a judge made a ruling, a uh, district judge, um, I think overturned a, uh, or dismissed a case where an illegal immigrant was charged with violating, um, it was part of uh, Title 18 having to do with an illegal immigrant owning a firearm. And okay. it seemed like, even though they had failed on their first two motions to dismiss, it seemed like the judge reconsidered on the third motion because of that Bruins ruling. It seemed like there was a test now that was established in Bruins that says, okay, well, hold on. If we're going to deprive citizens of a right to own a firearm, now we need to consult the historical record to see if like, states have a compelling or good reason to do so in comport with like what happened in the past and now when you look at um when you look at like illegal immigrants owning firearms or undocumented people owning firearms mm -hmm. it looks like when they consult the historical record well they found i think the example used in this case was british loyalists who um were illegally or whatever undocumented or whatever the fuck like british loyalists were basically allowed to own firearms as long as they hadn't like committed violent crimes or they weren't seen to be uh you know as like violent horrible people yeah. and that that's the test that's applied so you can't just de facto or you, i'm sorry you can't just like as a general rule say that like just because you're an illegal you can't own a gun now basically my understanding is basically well well you're right in that the brewing case established like uh kind of a different sort of analysis uh much stricter analysis than traditional kind of 
uh, scrutiny, tiers of scrutiny balancing. It's more, like you said, historical, mm -hmm. right? And you have to look at the analog to see if there's some, um, again, I'm not an expert on. Yeah, that on basically it's like now it's presumptive yeah. that you are covered. If it's not explicit, yeah. it's presumptive that you're covered. In order to take that away, you've got to find a historical analog of a state or something doing this, basically. Some complications. Yeah. Number one is this country didn't have an immigration system, really, it, at the, when the Second Amendment was passed. You know, the first immigration law we had, I think, was the Alien Friends Act and the Alien Enemies Act. These are, you know, acts under the Adams administration, but it's not really an immigration system, per se. Mm -hmm. And we don't really have uh, a full full immigration system really at all until 1875 and thereabouts when we start passing the Chinese exclusion laws. And, and then we're having like the treasury department enforce it, or, you know, we're using state officers to enforce immigration law. And so the kind of historical analog that you'd want maybe for the modern day immigration system maybe isn't present in the story in history because we don't have the immigration system, um, that we have now back in the day. Right. Uh -huh. Um, so, that's kind of what I, I think everyone should take this historical analysis. I think it's a good place to start for sure, but it can't end there. There's just, there's not perfect analogs for, for what we're looking for here. Mm -hmm. And what you get is you get a lot of people who are very outcome oriented and are twisting history or just ignoring it when it doesn't suit them. And not, yeah, so anyway, I, I hear you, but what was the controversy? On, oh, some guy just thought it was a bullshit ruling. But it seems like if you apply that Bruins test as is to the guy, I mean, I don't see how it fails. Um, or, or rather, I don't see how you could restrict, I guess, an undocumented person from owning a right. firearm. It seems like the default assumption would be, again, it's the Second Amendment is presumptive of everybody here. And then you need to find a compelling historical analog to show why you can deprive a particular person, according to the Bruins test. I don't know if that's a good test. Like you said, there might be issues with that. I don't know if that's the best way to go about doing it. Um, but... Yeah. I don't. I have the whole. One of the purposes that was sold to me about the historical analysis, an exclusive historical analysis. I think everyone wants to look at history, but an exclusive historical analysis is to kind of get away from the general balancing of state interest, where we're we're fearful of the way courts might generally balance generalizable interests and you know national security against a right. And so the whole purpose of having a, a very historically tailored approach is to avoid the kind of policy making from judges. Uh -huh. And if that's gonna be your analytical approach that you're gonna take, then you can't really, um, I don't think that you can dispute and say like, okay, well, I don't like this outcome. And so therefore I'm not gonna apply the historical analysis here. It seems a little bit inconsistent, I don't know. Wait, wait, what, can you explain what do you mean? What is the inconsistent yeah, part? Yeah, so like- Like within Bruins or within other cases? If your whole purpose of, of doing a historical exclusive approach to judicial philosophy or whatever mm -hmm. is to try to avoid um, activist judges or yeah. judge judicial policy making and just get to the what the historical analogs are and use that to guide everything mm -hmm. then I think it's a little bit hypocritical to have that approach um, when it suits you but when there really isn't a good historical record of there being an analog to restrictions on guns pertaining to um, you know, immigrant violate immigration violators, whoever those people are, back mm -hmm. in the at the turn of the twentieth century, or sorry, the eighteenth uh, century, then you're kind of stuck with it, and it shows. I think. Well, isn't that isn't the idea done, that they start with the yeah. fact that the Second Amendment, the presumption is that it applies to all citizens, and then limitations have to come from there. So we're starting from the area of all people have this protected right, and now we need to make positive arguments to remove it. Well, yeah, well, you, I think you said the perfect word there. You said the people, right? Mm -hmm. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Yeah. The, the Constitution is very clear when it refers to citizens and when it refers to people. Mm -hmm. um, and it, for, for example, there's the Privileges or Immunities Clause and the Privileges and Immunities Clause, mm -hmm. which sometimes refer to citizens. Yeah. And but the Second Amendment, I think, it, says explicitly says the right of the people, people to keep yeah. and bear arms. Yeah. Um, and that's so unless you're saying like that doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter when they specify citizen versus non non citizen. Oh wait, I don't understand right. what you're saying. Wouldn't we, the people, then include like non -doc undocumented, just yeah, whoever? Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, yeah. I think that that's what you just pointed out. Yeah, and I I super agree with that. Now you could say, well, if you break immigration rules, you're a criminal, and there are things against. Well, uh, so while that's true, the argument that this but particular 
the argument that this particular federal judge made was that there were British loyalists at the time who were still in the United States after the revolution, but when they were determining whether or not to take their guns away, they did like a per person analysis. So that's why they were saying this particular sure. part under um, the Title 18 USC 92 was failing because there wasn't this individual analysis done. So part of this case was saying like, well, look, this guy doesn't have a history of any criminal behavior. He reports his work shit and everything else. It seems like if he was a British loyalist, he would have been allowed to own a gun, even if he wasn't like a documented citizen or whatever. Therefore, yeah. It, yeah. But there's another more fundamental issue with, with taking that approach, which is immigration law has long been now upheld um, that it's not criminal in nature. There are some provisions of criminal law that sort of are related to immigration. Falsifying credentials at the border can be a crime. Mm -hmm. Crossing the border illegally can be a crime for sure. Yeah. And is a crime. But uh, a violation, you know, holding someone for immigration proceedings, that's not criminal in nature. A removal proceeding is not criminal in nature. You don't have all those beautiful criminal procedure rights that attach uh, as a criminal defendant for, to someone who's a respondent in an immigration proceeding. And that's a long held precedent. That So uh, that, that's kind of why I speak up whenever someone like Tim Poole is like, call them what they are, criminal aliens. Because the, the, the truth is, it isn't the case that everyone who's here without status is a criminal. Just because you're uh, breaking the immigration code just because you do something illegal. Yeah, there was like a really criminal. There was a really weird period for, and yeah, the immigration shit in some ways is really weird. When Molina was here for, um, I think under the K one visa to get married, I think that between her coming here and between us actually getting married, I think she's considered like an illegal, basically person. Like they said that if you leave the country and try to come back, they won't let you in, that you can get in trouble for that. So you have to stay here until the marriage is done. And then after that, then you're like clear once you start your application for and everything else. Um, but like that period of like- situations that can, that can rise there. So like the K visa, you have to stay, but you know, by virtue of the K visa, cause mm -hmm. you're doing something through uh, USCIS adjustment of status, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. assuming, as yeah. opposed to- Yeah, but that K visa is only good, I think for yeah. 90 days, I believe. Uh, correct, cor correct, but you, but you can adjust your status, right? But if you, in certain situations, if you leave the country mm -hmm. without having adjusted your status um, and you accrue unlawful presence in the United States, there are these three and 10 year bans, or either it's five or, or 10, yeah, it's, but it's yeah. th three or 10. But like if you leave the country having accrued certain amounts of unlawful status, you're not gonna be allowed back in. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that applies to the K visa, um, but maybe that's I, I just heard that. weird shit about like basically it was said yeah. that like while you're waiting for the so, Something to do with the adjustment of status while you're waiting for that filing on that that if you leave the country try to come back in They might not let you mm -hmm. in and in the United States getting turned away at the border is supposedly really bad Like if you try to come in and they turn you down that like mm -hmm. looks bad on you and hurts you in future or bullshit or whatever I don't know some dumb shit, but okay, there are people who come here on like non-immigrant visas on visitor visas and and try to get married on a non-marriage visa mm -hmm. uh, and They have they usually have to overstay their visa to do because it if they don't, uh, there'll be a presumption applied against them that, that they were lying when they said they were coming here for for pleasure, or whatever, mm -hmm. or or just just for visiting. Yeah, um, and so yeah, you can accrue some unlawful status, and that's not in and of itself a crime. People who can't get into their heads the difference between doing something illegal or against the law, and the set of things that we call crimes that are defined by the states as crimes, mm -hmm. and so it isn't the case that just because someone violates immigration law that they're, that they're necessarily criminals. Obviously, if you cross the border illegally, um, you've committed a crime for sure. Yeah. But not everyone does that. Yeah, because yeah, they come on visas and they yeah stay for a variety of reasons things happen, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of weird shit too around working that seemed like it was retroactively okay. Um, don't take legal advice from anybody, but it seemed like you could work in the US, to, like kind of sort of illegally or whatever, but like if you apply for a card, you get it, like retroactively becomes okay if you do it within a, some bullshit or whatever. I don't know, it's really weird to me, but yeah, I don't know. It, it is a little bit insane. I think that people should put into perspective that for the vast majority of the start of the country through the Civil War, there was there was no structure of immigration law really in this country at all. Mm -hmm. And we had some treaties about um, re the, the start of our immigration system had to do with some treaties that we made with China about how we would treat Chinese nationals who came into the country. There was obviously ways to naturalize and all that stuff, but there wasn't a uh, an immigration system to speak of. Yeah, which kind of makes sense if you think about it, right? Because I mean, other than like people that we were probably actively fighting with a lot, I imagine, like it's not like people are gonna be boating over from all over the world to come and just immigrate to the US, but would be my guess as yeah. much like in those years, you know, but. But a lot of these anti-immigration memes that exist now, you know, they're, they're copy and paste from, from earlier eras. And so I, I urge people, immigration, illegal immigration is a big problem, but but I urge people not to like catastrophize and, and, and remember that we, 
we still had a country back in the day without an immigration system. The, the notion of a nation and, and of a country is more than just having borders and yeah. uh, you know having an immigration system. Do you think, so I think it's important for the census to count everybody. I support that. Do you think there's a good yeah, argument sure. for them though, apportioning house seats based on, on like non-resident illegal people? No, in I, yeah. no, because I think just because you can't vote or because you're not a citizen doesn't mean the laws of a state or of the country don't affect you. Um, as a country, we recognize that there are people here besi besides just citizens. And yeah. we know that because the Constitution refers to them as such, the people. Mm -hmm. The people is more than just the citizens. The people includes lawful permanent residents um, and, and other categories of individuals. You know, American nationals is another example. An American national, um, it might be just from American Samoa, but there's there's a category of non-citizen who is American, but who is not a citizen. And I think, uh, and they're called American nationals. I think the, um, I think American Samoa is where they're from, mostly. Hmm. So there's a community of of individuals in, in, in America who are not just citizens. Um, and obviously people who are like attempting to um, to become citizens. These are all stakeholders in our country. Sure. And so I don't think it really makes, I, I, I agree with rules that preference American citizens, mm -hmm. like having citizens be the only ones who could vote. But I don't think that that therefore means that we can't have rules that apportion equally the people of the hmm. United States. Okay. All right. I'm just curious. I don't know if I fully agree on that, but we can fight later on it. I love you, baby. Be careful. Yeah. Love you. Bye. Well, I think any... I have noticed community notes. I think that you are right about that, and I do think community notes are helpful. I think any... Wait, well, the that? data is over for a community note to surface. And all of the code for community notes is open source. All of the data is open source, so you can completely recreate it from scratch. The way to build trust is transparency. I have noticed community notes. I think that you are right about that, and I do think community notes are helpful. I think any yeah. type of content moderation, I do think that's helpful. You recently called content moderation, though, a digital chastity belt. Do you think that... You, do you believe that X and you have some responsibility to moderate hate speech on the platform? I think we have a responsibility to adhere to the law and we have a responsibility to be transparent uh, about when things are shown, why they're shown. Uh, so we, that's why we, we uh, open source our algorithm. Um, the, I think once you start getting going beyond the law, now you're putting your thumb on the scale. And we don't want to put out that on the scale. What, what, what is that? What does that mean? There's not laws against spamming people, but I, I imagine you don't want spammer bots on your platform. You don't want to make any content moderate. Like you don't need to have rules about the laws on your platform. What does that even mean? You wouldn't put those. Like I'm, my guess is, if I go to the Twitter TOS, I'm probably not going to find a rule in the TOS against murder. Like, it, it, th those are laws already. You don't need rules about that. What do you mean you wouldn't go beyond the law? I don't understand. Start getting go open so adhere to the law, and we have a responsibility to be transparent uh, about when things are shown, why they're shown. Uh, so we, that's why we, we uh, open source our algorithm. Um, the, I think once you start getting going beyond the law, now you're putting your thumb on the scale. And we Elon often talks about the market cap value of Tesla. Have you enjoyed dabbling into trades? What do you think about that bullshit point? Has Tesla been more successful than other car manufacturers? Is Tesla more successful? I don't know if they're more successful or not, but it isn't. The market uh, capitalization is huge. I don't know what your I don't know what your question is. We don't want to put out that on the scale. It doesn't concern you that hate speech has gone. Research shows that it's gone up on the platform since you took over. That's not concerning to you? I believe that is false. In fact, the research that I've seen says it went down. Wow. Yeah, the study from the Institute of Strategic Dialogue found that anti-Semitic tweets doubled from June 22 to February 2023. One study reported that as many as 86% of the posts reported for hateful content remained up after being reported. Hate speech on the platform is up. This is also a thing where like, man the fuck up, bro. Say fuck it. We don't, we're not here to moderate hate speech. One man's hate speech is another man's Allah Akbar, okay? Listen, we're not here to moderate hate speech. We don't like it. Use the ignore feature. We have plenty of features on the platform. You can mute certain words. You can ignore certain accounts. Like we don't moderate hate speech. We're not in the business of that. We don't care about that. Just say that. Why be a pussy about it? Maybe he'll say that. Let's see, maybe he'll say that. Hate speech on the platform is up. Uh, so what, what they will typically do is they will count the number of posts, but not count the number of views. So what matters is, was that uh, post given high visibility or what did, did like one person see it? Uh, 
And if you look at the number of views of how, 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 many, how many times was Hayes content viewed on our platform, it is down substantially. Yeah. Well, that's not was what the study shows. And you said you like transparency. I'm going to show you this. And, and Don, you, you can get a study that will tell you whatever you want. But this, this, this is, these are just a handful of extremely, you look at those anti-Semitic and racist tropes and tweets. And as of this morning, they're still on. This is why it's all the same shit. You guys, you're such fucking losers in chat. This would be like the one area where I could have a little bit of respect for Elon, but I have none because he's a fucking loser. And you guys are losers for supporting him. You think that Elon coming here changes everything significantly, that everything is going to be more honest, more open. And look at all these, look at all this cope in chat. He doesn't want to lose advertisers. He's going to lose advertisers. What about the advertisers? He's going to fucking blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, isn't that why he is a private owner now? Isn't that why we don't have it as a publicly traded company? You know, Elon can be based. Like, this is an opportunity where, and by the way, this is an area where I do have strong feelings. Fuck hate speech um, in terms of regulating it. If you want to do hate speech, whatever. If you want to have rules on your platform, against like spamming slurs, whatever, I go for it. That's fine. I don't think it's as big a deal as people make it out to be. Let the people show you who they are, okay? This is where Elon could give a based answer. Go, listen, I agree that a lot of these things are disgusting, abhorrent, deplorable, but, you know, this is our social media platform. This is what the people want to say. Uh, this is what the people want to see. And, you know, we allow people to come on and have conversation. It might offend some people. It might not offend others, but... You know, you might think that this anti-Semitic meme is incredibly extreme and incredibly horrible. Other people that uh, might agree with you were sharing uh, videos of Aaron Bushnell setting himself on fire. And that was a really extreme and crazy video. And some people would have wanted that taken down. Do you want that taken down? Like how much stuff should be removed? How much stuff should be allowed? Like, in our opinion, we're not here to moderate that. We're here to allow people to post as long as they adhere to our relatively bare bones TOS. Like everything's fine. Like that could be a based answer that he'd give. Maybe he will say that. Okay. I haven't watched this. Maybe he will say that though. Maybe he'll say that. Yeah, it's an abhorrent, it's disgusting, it's bad, but we're here to protect the idea that people can come together and do free exchange of ideas and blah, blah. Maybe he will say that. Let's see. Thanks. And from your own content policy, these posts should have been deleted. So why haven't they been deleted? Why are they still there? Did you... That noise. Uh, we delete things if they are illegal. But these have been up there for a while. Are they illegal? Uh, no, they're not illegal, but... They're hateful and they can, they can lead to violence. As I just read to you, the shooters, you know, in all of these mass shootings, attributed social media to radicalizing. So, so Don, you love censorship is what you're saying. No, I don't. Oh my, how does he manage to take this point and make it the most soy fucking... Oh. Okay. Love censorship. Then why, why are you asking? I believe in moderation, but I, I don't believe in... Censorship is a... It's a Moderation is a propaganda word for censorship. But don't you think- Bro, you literally censor things from certain governments, depending on whether they, what was the one thing in, um, uh, was it the Turkish political opponent that th there was that huge blow up over? Um, am I making this up? Was it India? Was it Turkey? There was some country that was, they were threatening to ban, they were threatening to ban Twitter or some bullshit if Elon Musk didn't, it didn't ban somebody or, or de-boost somebody on, oh, fuck me, I'm not gonna be able to find it. Was it Turkey? Why can't I find this? Elon Musk, censorship, Twitter, Turkey. You wanted him to say the thing you wanted him to say, and now you're saying, no, it's because he's saying the most pussy way possible. Don't be like, are you pro censorship? Own it, own it. Don't be a snake, own it. Don't be like, oh, I don't, I don't want any censorship. Be like, no, listen, we will keep hateful content on the site. It's part of what people post. Not like, are you pro censorship? Defense decision to limit tweets in Turkey during tight presidential election. In response to legal process and to ensure Twitter remains available to people of Turkey, we have taken action to restrict access to some content in Turkey today, reads a tweet from Twitter's Global Government Affairs account posted at 6 a.m. Turkish time on Saturday. What a pussy. If, do you think if President Biden were to pass a law saying you can't post anything bad about Democrats anymore or else we're going to ban Twitter, do you think Elon would tighten down on Twitter? No, of course not. He'd take a huge stand. Get the fuck out of here. Free censorship is a... It's a Moderation is a propaganda word for censorship. But don't you think free speech is one thing, right? Or not, you know, Look, if something's illegal, we're gonna take it down. If it's not illegal, then we're putting our thumb on the scale and we're being censors. 
But you already do this. You deboost Substack, for instance. Like you, your whole algorithm like favors and disfavors like certain types of content, uh, depending on like the sites it posts to and everything as well, right? Like uh. you're putting your thumb on the scale for moderating hate speech. I mean, you don't put out child pornor pornography. That's not it's illegal. That some people would say that's considered censorship. I'm just saying you. No, I literally, Don. You know, I, I literally said if, if something is legal, okay, we will obviously remove it. Okay. But if it is not legal, the, 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 the laws in this country were, are, are put forward by the citizens. We're a democracy. Uh, if those laws are put in place uh, by, the, by the people, we adhere to those laws. Okay, and I agree. We adhere agree. to the laws of, of, okay. of others. If you go beyond the law... Wait, what was Don's example? But if it is not legal, okay, we will obviously remove it. Okay. But if it is not legal, the, 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 the laws in this country were... Wait. Legal. Some people would say that's considered censorship. I'm just saying you... No. Or moderating. You're putting your thumb on the scale for moderating hate speech. I mean, you don't put out child porno pornography. That's not it's illegal. That some people would say that's considered censorship. I'm just saying you. No, I literally, Don. You know, I, oh, that's that's a retarded counter. I literally said, if, if something is legal, okay, we will obviously remove it. Okay, but if it is not legal. The, 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 the laws in this country were, are, are put forward by the citizens. We're a democracy. Uh, if those laws are put in place uh, by, the, by the people, we adhere to those laws. Okay, and I agree. We agree. To the laws of, of, okay. of others. If you go beyond the law, you're actually going beyond the will of the people. Okay, agreed uh, with the law. But if you are doing something that promotes hate and violence and ultimately leads to killing, you don't feel there's you have any responsibility not to do that. Uh, when, when, when the people who are I mean, doing I, it admittedly are saying those articles all the time that lead to, to violence and killing, um, don't, don't they, shouldn't they, like you're applying a differential standard to, but uh, that would never, that would never be in mainstream media. These types of images, that type of language, those things would never be, we'd never, in main, when I was in mainstream media, we'd never promote things that um, would, would be anti-Semitic. We would never promote, promote things, things that, that would. Either. Did you, did you, did you not see those? You said promote. You th if content is on the platform, that doesn't mean we promote it. But that wouldn't be on a, on a platform. Lemon's like he's fishing for a sound bite. For mainstream media at all. No, but you can think of, that, that's because the mainstream media is, has like, whatever, 20 articles a day. Uh, we have 500 million posts today. Okay, understood. Million. Does it bother you? How do you feel about that when you see it? I obviously disagree with that. I think it's not, it's not good at all. It's terrible. But you don't want to get rid of it on the platform, or at least moderate it. The laws, the, you're, you're, what, what you're suggesting is censorship that goes beyond well, the law. It's, and what I'm saying is uh, I, that we, I guess, have a disagreement, because I do not believe in censorship that goes beyond the law, and you do. We have a difference of opinion in that regard. I understand that. But these are your own rules on your own platform. This, these go against the, the rules on your platform. That's why I'm asking you. If you, had, if you said, listen, we allow everything, but that's not what your content rules say. And that's why I'm asking you, why no. are they still there? The, your own content policy. That's why I'm asking you that, not because- Which part of our content policy says that we, have, we, we, we should delete these, these, these things? Your content policy talks about hate speech. Yes, we don't promote hate speech. Hate speech. And so you don't consider that hate speech? I guess you're not understanding what I'm saying. There's, there's, there's if, if, if there's, you, you can find, like, at, at, you can sign up right now and, and, and do a, a hundred things that are hateful. Um, but if nobody reads it, it doesn't matter. So, the, you, can, you can think of X as being, it's much like the internet. It's not some, t it's some tiny publication with like 20 articles a day. It's no, 500 million. Uh, but everyone has the opportunity to read it, Elon. So and they, they, they don't the opportunity to read the internet. Are you said suggesting we should shut down the internet? No, but but you don't own the internet. I'm asking you about you and your responsibility on your platform. And I, I so I see how you feel. <laughs> retard now. versus retard. <laughs> you don't agree. We don't agree on this. Yes, you want censorship, and I don't. No, I don't want censorship. At yes, all. you do. No, I want responsibility. I think there is. I think there. You desperately want censorship. No, if I want a censorship, you want censorship so bad you can taste it. No, that's not true. It's not true. I think that there's right and wrong. And, and I think that, and I and I think that when you have a platform that's as big as yours and as powerful as yours and as influential as yours, and you are a person of consequence to the world with what you do, 
that there is a certain responsibility that goes along with what you have on your platform and what you put out to the world. And I, I think that's important. You don't see that responsibility. Um, I think the, we have a responsibility to uh, adhere to the law. Um, and if people want the law changed, they should talk to, the elect talk to their elected representative and get the law changed, and then we will adhere to the law. Okay. But if you want us to go beyond the law, that is, that is uh, us deciding to be censors. So, and I'm against censorship. I'm, I'm in favor of freedom of speech. Yeah. And freedom of speech only is relevant when people you don't like say things you don't like. Otherwise, it has no meaning. But I, I do think that there are, there should be guardrails. And I believe in free speech as much as you. I would no, fight. I don't, I, I don't disagree. I don't agree with um, a lot of what you put out on social media, but I will fight for your right to be able to say it. Great. He should, Elon should ask him, so then what kind of guardrail should go up? That would be a good counter question. What, what do you think are the guardrails that should ban it? You say ban hate speech. What is hate speech? The U.S. doesn't define hate speech in any way, so shape, or form. How are we equal adherence to freedom of speech if you want to ban something that's not explicitly called for to be banned in the United States law? Like, it would be a good counter question, but Elon is not a conversational guy, apparently. Yeah. Okay, so listen, let's talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, all right? That's been a target of yours lately on X. You, uh, on, there was a repost of Ben Shapiro you claim that DEI is killing people. Specifically, you point to medicine. You claim that DEI programs are putting people at risk. Do you really believe this to be true? And what evidence do you have to support it? Um, what I was referring to there was that if, uh, if we lower the standards for doctors, uh, such, so that they, you know, if, if the test for a doctor is lowered, uh, that, then the probability of them making a mistake and killing someone is... In Elon's defense, I think he just offered Lemon millions of dollars and assumed that brought, bought him some good faith in an interview. Well, he assumed that he would do PR for him. That was the, just like the Twitter, uh, the Twitter files journalist did, is Elon thought he could just buy PR. Like Elon right now is basically uh, Jamie Lannister walking through the forest with the weird dude that chops his hand off and he assumes that his money is gonna save him for everything, that people love him or suck up to him just because he's rich. Uh, I think this is a big reason why Elon has trouble with like media related stuff. I really think that like it would it would do him so much to take like a month or two of I don't know if it would be public speaking or fucking debate classes or some fucking anything to learn how to actually put together coherent thoughts and respond meaningfully to the things that people say because his conversational abilities are some of the well not some of the worst that's not true they're bad um, not some of the worst I've ever seen but like they're pretty bad. Obviously, gonna be higher. Wait, say that again. I'm not sure I understand what you said. I want to make sure I understand what you're saying. I yes. If he stutters just as much when he's on Rogan. No, 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 no. This isn't about stuttering. It's not about autism. It's not about stuttering. He just has a really bad time hearing somebody say something, uh, understanding what they're asking, and then putting together a response that coherently refutes or agrees with whatever's being said. He has a really hard time like following conversations and then tracking that in, in, a, in a live environment. He just, he's like, I don't know if he's incapable of it, or he doesn't practice it, or if he gets nervous, or if it's whatever, but like, yeah, he needs, he, he needs to like practice this skill. If the, if the standards for- I'm not sure I understand what you said. I wanna make sure I understand what you're saying. I yes, say. if, if, the, if the standards for passing medical exams and becoming a doctor or, or especially something like a surgeon, if the standards are lowered, uh, uh, then is he just giving PR answers? I don't think he wants to answer 100% honestly. It's a, I think it's a combination of a few things. I think one is, I don't, Elon just either, I mean, he has a low verbal IQ, I don't know. One is it just seems like he's in general not very adept at navigating conversations, period. He just seems to not be a great conversationalist. Um, and I think that's born in almost every single interview, staged presentation, like everything you always see. He's just not a great conversationalist, number one. Number two, he's trying to be somewhat PR friendly because obviously he doesn't want advertisers to flee the platform and everything, even though he said fuck advertisers and all that. Like, yeah, it seems like he's trying to be somewhat PR friendly. That's why he's saying like, oh, well, I'm, I'm against censorship rather than owning the hate speech thing, right? Um, and then three is it seems like he probably hasn't actually thought through a lot of these political opinions. It's just kind of like the, the hip current cool thing right now and he doesn't actually understand deeply any of these opinions that he kind of holds because he's been like meme influenced. And I think these three things together just lead to him being really bad when interviewing with people like Don Lemon, who I'm pretty sure Don Lemon has a history of doing fairly aggressive interviews. Does he not? This is the first one he ever done. Doesn't Don Lemon? Don Lemon is known as kind of a, or, or, or at least has potential to be, I'm trying to think of a, interviews I've seen him do in the past. Um, unless I'm crazy. It's been a long time since I've seen anything from like CNN or any of these guys. But yeah, I just, he's just not at all like ready or capable of doing this type of an interview. If the standards are lowered, uh, 
uh, then it, the probability that the surgeon will make a mistake is higher. They're making mistakes in their exam. They, they may make mistakes with people, and that may result in people dying. What evidence do you have, though, that they're lowering the standards? Uh, there is no evidence of that. What's I your... believe that. So, like, this is the problem. Is Don Lemon is obviously going to ask him to go a little bit deeper than the meme picture. And I don't know if Elon can go deeper than the meme picture on any of these points. But maybe, but we'll see. Elon did understand the, um, he did understand the apportioning of the House seats in Congress. He did have an understanding of that. Um, so. You have, though, that they're lowering the standards. I, there is no evidence of that. What's I your... believe there is. There's no evidence of that, Elon. What, what is the evidence? I, I believe they have literally lowered the status at, at Duke University, and that is what the article was referring to. There's no evidence saying they have that. not lowered there's, the status? There's no evidence about uh, lowering standards, and I think that there is... Um, I believe that is a false statement you're okay. making. Okay, well, well, we'll figure it out. Yeah, I, I think I mean, the interesting thing is, when this is posted on the X platform, there will be a whole bunch of things that rebut what you said and what, what I said, right. and so people can then make their own decision based on the replies. They're both saying nothing? Well, keep in mind that Don Lemon is basically playing the role of like Ethan from H3H3. Don Lemon's goal in this interview is to try to get him on a soundbite or to get him to own something uh, that he has a headline for. So I would imagine you would expect that coming in, but that's, that, that's Don Lemon's goal. Don Lemon's goal is basically just to see if Elon will trip over himself and say something stupid that he can run with as a headline. That's the whole goal. The rebuttals and the community notes. I think that's fair, but I do think that w on this particular topic, I do think that you and Ben Shapiro are, are reaching in uh, about this, because there was a what, it, what Ben posted said that people were. He gave instances of people who were deliberately uh, harming people. Um, nowhere in the thread does Ben suggest at all. I should say that anyone is being killed as a, a result of DEI. Um, that's purely speculative. There's research on DEI and medicine, and there's no evidence that standards are being lowered, okay. that DEI is affecting medicine. Actually, like okay. on, only 5% of doctors yeah. are black, and a small percent Yeah, well, I think minorities. you will find that when this is posted to the X platform, that uh, people will reply to it with evidence. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong, let's see. Okay, so, but that's my whole thing about moderation. Maybe you're wrong, but you'll put it out there. You don't know if it's right. Do you think that your responsibility to make sure something is right before you, the person who owns it, Elon Musk, yeah. is a huge figure in the world, that you should know that it's true, that some there are people at X who can get re- Why aren't you acknowledging how dumb it was from Don from a business perspective due to this gotcha interview for his first one? Well, the thing is, is that if this was, if the political alignments were flipped, you would actually say this is based. I can think it's pretty based for Don to do this. To be offered a deal from Twitter and then to shit on the fucking CEO in the first interview, that's actually pretty fucking based. Uh, and you would be saying that if the political alignment was, was, was flipped, but since you're a political partisan hack, uh, you only see people attacking anti-institutional people as being bad and mean and evil and not nice or whatever. Um, but if it was Donald Trump up here calling somebody a name over and over again, uh, and then the hats were flipped, you would be thinking it's super based. But no, I mean, I, I respect Don Lemon for doing this and nuking this deal, um, as opposed to being a suck up fucking loser, like those Twitter file hack journalists were, or anybody else that tries to sell a program to X and suck up to Elon at the same time doing it. So I don't, I, the interview has been pretty snaky. Like, I don't, I don't know why to say snaky, but like Don Lemon is clearly just ship, uh, fishing for gotchas. I don't think any of the points he's brought up have been like illuminating or good, but Elon just sucks at talking, so. It's figure in the world that you should know that it's true, that some there are people at X who can get research for you before you put something out there like that. That's not necessarily true, even in other examples. Um, if I say something that uh, is inaccurate, I'm immediately corrected on the platform. That's the advantage of a real-time uh, system like X. So there will be immediately in the replies, corre people correcting me. There will be a community note that will correct me, um, which is attached to the actual post itself. Do you think as many people um, read the... Yes. Do you think as many people read that as it reads your tweet? Yes, in fact, and if, if there's... A it's so annoying when you keep referring to Trump conservatives, there is a lot of us that are not conservative, and it's annoying watching you avoid the simple question. What question did I just avoid? I'm pretty sure I answered explicitly. What was the last question? Don't you think it's lame for Don to do this? I said, no, I think it's pretty base to bite the hand that feeds, to shit on the guy, the CEO of the company that is trying to sell you a deal. What do you, what, what do you think I'm avoiding? There's a community note that happens uh, later that where somebody didn't see, but they replied to that, uh, or interacted with that post. We will notify them that there is now a community note correcting that post. Mm -hmm. 
Just so you... Whereas if you consider the conventional media, that doesn't happen. Conventional media makes false statements all the time with no, and nobody ever hears the correction. When I was in conventional media, I can only speak for myself. If I got something wrong, if someone got something wrong on the platform that I, that I was on, it was corrected. And we made sure that it was corrected. Now, I can't speak for Great, well, anyone else. That's, I, think, I don't think that's a universal situation. Okay. So I just want, just the research, so when you talk, do you believe that people are dying because medical standards, DEI is causing medical standards to be lowered? Do you actually believe people are dying because of that? I, I believe that it, uh, if... If we, if we lower the standards for what it takes to become a doctor... But you're saying if we lower the standards, yes. but do you believe people are dying because the standards are being lowered? I, I don't or have think that lowered. is yes an issue, but it could become an issue. Okay. But the actual evidence in history shows the exact opposite. If you look at how minorities are treated by the medical system, oh. most, doctors, okay. most doctors now are white. And... There are lots of mistakes in medicine. So you're saying that my doctors are, have bad medical care? I'm trying to understand your logic here when it comes to DEI because there's no actual evidence of what you're saying. No, I, I said, so if the standards, like, if, like let's say, uh, I think that particular thing was re referring to surgeons. Let's say a surgeon is, uh, is asked to, uh, a, <clears throat> a surgeon in training is asked to do it a series of operations under the supervision of a senior surgeon, and they get a bunch of those operations wrong. If, 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 if that happens, and yet they are still approved to be a surgeon, the probability that someone will die, I think, at some point is high. Okay, I understand that, but that's a hypothetical. That doesn't mean it's happening. I didn't say it's happening. You, you didn't say it was happening. I said, I said it will. You, but I said if, 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 if we lower standards, people, people will die. Why respond to something or put something out there that has not happened? Because I could say... You because know, I don't want it to happen. I think we don't want to lower the lowest standards. Okay, if you look at the history of the medical industry, um, especially when it comes to black Americans, it shows the exact opposite. If you look at the T Tuskegee experiment and on and on, only 5% of doctors are in America are black. All of them are white. So are you saying that if the majority of doctors are white, are you saying that... D and there are still these inequities, right? And there's and people still there's still mistakes. Are you blaming DEI for that? No, I'm I, I'm very very basically saying that if we lower standards uh, for what it takes to become uh, a board certified surgeon uh, or you know an oncologist or something where that where the the kind of disease we're talking about, if you make a mistake causes someone to die, then there the more people will die than if we don't lower the standards. Therefore, we should not lower the standards. But why do you think they're lowering the standards for minority doctors or women doctors? Or that's what the, the, the audit, that's what that article said, suggested. Yes, at the, at Duke University. Okay, the evidence that I have shows that that's not true. Okay. So listen, after the door, I feel like Elon should ask more questions. Like Elon should say, "Oh, okay. Well, if they're not lowering the standards, what does DEI mean? If somebody could already qualify to get in, why would anything have to be changed?" I think that if Elon, Elon, I feel like Elon could completely destroy Don if you would just ask a simple question in, in exchange. Like, oh, if DEI isn't about lowering the standards and you just want to do it all merit-based, well then why would we have to change anything? Or blew off this um, mid-flight Don't you think the way that Lemon Guy is talking makes him appear to be partisan? What, what are you talking about? Yes, Don is hyper-partisan, of course. The, this is a Elon Musk assassination interview and he's, I think he's like a solidly left-leaning like Democrat partisan person. Yeah, that's his like whole brand. That's like asking if like Ben Shapiro and the way that he interviews people makes him seem partisan. Yeah, Ben Shapiro is a right-leaning part of the uh, fucking Daily Wire partisan pundit. Yeah, of course. So I'll ask an airline flight, do you remember that? Um, you responded to a post claiming that the average HB HBCU grad was less intelligent than the average airline pilot uh, and stated that it will take an airline crashing, an airplane crashing and killing hundreds of people for them to change this crazy policy of DIE. I don't know if you did you misspell it on purpose, which meant it should be DEI. Do you believe that women and- <laughs> I'm trolling him so hard. I'm sorry, it's dumb. But on purpose, which meant it should be DEI. Do you believe that women and minority pilots are inherently less intelligent and less skilled than white male pilots? No, I'm just saying that we should not lower the standards for them. Okay. okay. 
there's no evidence that standards are being lowered when it comes to- The funny thing is though, Destiny, Lemon claims not to be partisan at all in the beginning of this interview and claims CNN is also not necessarily left. I don't think he claimed that CNN wasn't left, but yeah, he does claim to be not partisan. But guess what? Everybody claims to not be partisan. That's why I don't. That's why it's a worthless fucking tag. It's stupid to say you're not partisan. Everybody says they're not partisan because they think it's some fucking virtue. Yes, everybody says that. Congratulations, welcome to media. To the okay. airline industry. You've, re you've repeatedly said that there's no evidence that standards are being lowered and watch the replies showing all the evidence that it is. Replies, replies though on social media or on Twitter are not necessarily fact and evidence. No, that's, they will just, that's people's they will, they will opinion. Cite okay. all the, all the, all, the reply, we'll in the replies to this, you will see how often the, this, the, the information is cited showing that indeed there are significant uh, cases where uh, standards are lowered. And I do hope that happens. I do yes. hope that happens and I, and I look forward to it. And as you said, if you're wrong, then you're wrong. And if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. Yes. Okay. How can DEI possibly enforce their policies without lowering standards? Isn't it fundamentally hardwired into it? Yeah, that's why I think, I don't, I'm not sure. I don't know. That's why it'd be a good counter question for Elon to ask, because then it would put Don on the like, well, fuck, yeah. So let's, so and I'm glad we're having this conversation debating. This is what you should, we should be doing debating the issue. So right. if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong, and then they'll be proven. <laughs> Don Lemon is using the conservative talking point. It's good that we're having open discourse, but Elon, for all of his ranting for an hour here about how he's not pro-censorship, apparently decided to ax this show, but. And then the thing in you as well. But I just want to tell you that that pilot that you talked about. I don't get how Lemon can be so obtuse. Affirmative action is this. Don Lemon is not being obtuse. Or rather, he is being obtuse, but it's intentional. Remember, his only goal here is to try to go to misstep or a misspeak or get a sick clip out of Elon. That's essentially um, that's that's all that's all this interview is, right? Uh, in fact, was a woman pilot landed the plane safe, safely despite the major found malfunction with the equipment. Boeing has taken responsibility for that incident, saying that it was caused by a faulty door panel. So I'm not sure what that had to do with lowering the standards for pilots when it was a policy. No, it's not lowering standards for pilots. It's, it's the, the incentive structure, uh, I, I believe, at Boeing changed to uh, include DEI as, uh, as, as a fundamental example. Lemon is embarrassing himself in this debate. If you are being honest, he looks really bad. Do you really think that's the case? Personally, I kind of agree. I don't think Lemon looks great in this interview. I don't think he's made like a ton of great points and he's circling the same thing over and over again. But if that's true, why didn't Elon want on his platform? <laughs> if Elon thought he blew him the fuck out of the water, why wouldn't he have him post it then? And make everybody laugh at how dumb Lemon was? Why would Elon get triggered and, and ax the show? Executive incentive. Um, so, but I, in my view, it should be purely about passenger safety. Okay, but do you understand how by saying just that standards are being lowered that you're implying that they're being lowered because people are less skilled and less intelligent and you're talking about people of color and or women. Uh, look, I'm, I'm saying we should not lower standards. But do you, you don't, that's it. I think everyone can agree that you can't, you shouldn't lower standards. Great. That's but cool. you're implying that they're lowering standards because of people of color. Oh my God, is he finally going to ask him? Is he going to ask him? Because not a white male. You're saying that they're less skilled and less intelligent. That's what no, you're I'm saying. No, I'm not saying that. I'm simply saying that they are. Then why would they be lowering the standards? I don't know. Why are they lowering the standards? Just so you know, 5% of pilots are female, 4% are black. So you're, you know, you're talking about this widespread takeover of minorities and women when that's not actually true. I'm not saying there's a widespread takeover. Well, you're saying that the standards are being lowered because of certain people. Um, and you, how do you, you don't believe in DEI, right? Do you not believe diverse in diversity, equity, and inclusion? I think we should be uh, treat people uh, according to their skills. There's also, I'm sorry, but like, again, like Elon has conducted this interview about as well as I would expect, like a 62 year old overweight, dying of type two diabetic, conservative guy with a MAGA Trump hat protesting in an Alabama MAGA march would. Like Elon has, like this guy's a billionaire. He owns a social media platform. I feel like I should be getting way better answers out of this guy. Like, I, like he could be doing this so much better. He just, I don't, like technically I don't even know if I, I probably agree with him more in this debate than, or this interview, whatever the fuck, than I would with Don Lemon. I think I probably would, but he's just such a, he's just, he's so basic, ugh.
Like there are so many, if you thought about these things for two seconds, there are so many better responses to everything. Like when the guy brings up the percentage of female pilots, the percentage of black pilots, like the answer is, well, yeah, wouldn't you expect them to be? Wouldn't you expect there to be la less black pilots if pilots are uh, uh, a thing that happens after a large amount of education and black people live in areas in the United States that are historically disadvantaged and don't have the same economic opportunities or educational opportunities as white neighborhoods? Yeah, I think that that's a problem. Now is DEI the answer to that problem? Do I want worse pilots in order to make it more diverse? Or do I want more funding for education and neighborhoods to make so that people can go to pilot school, right? Like. There's so many other ways you can walk down these things to make good arguments, but he doesn't know anything. He's, he's just a fucking retard. He just like parrots memes. It's, he lives in memes. He's like the Norman Finkelstein of social media owners. It's just like random, thoughtless, pointless platitudes of stupid fucking shit. It's just so boring. Treat people uh, according to their skills uh, and their integrity, and that's it. Do you know that studies show? Studies show. Yeah, well, we can look them up. But so your reaction to studies show and I understand, right? Because I always like to say, I always like to point to an exact uh, study, right? Sure. Something. What would you do if he hired you to teach him debating? Well, step one, if you're gonna have a debate with somebody or in a combative interview, you should probably have an idea of what they wanna talk to you about. That'd probably be really important. Now, if this is a show paid for by Elon Musk that was going to be hosted officially and supported by the platform X, my guess is gonna be Elon probably could have made an ask, hey, what about do you think you wanna talk about for this interview? I doubt this is an ambush interview, and if it is, that's Elon's own fucking fault. If it's your own goddamn employee or talent that you're hiring doing an ambush interview on you, you don't even ask to bother, you don't even bother to ask for a list of questions. Also, Elon should just know that he's been tweeting crazy shit like this forever. And imagine, imagine, how much of a mind fuck it would be if Elon spent two days, or I'm sorry, two hours, since you guys say he's got 155 IQ, he can take his perfect flawless SAT scores, his perfect flawless South African rich boy education, and actually apply his mind for a couple days and learn all of the really good, thoughtful answers and responses to all of these questions. That way Elon could be an actual advocate for uh, not for lack of censorship and, and you know, saying fuck hate speech and uh, to have an open platform where ideas are discussed and things are factual. He could actually be a good advocate for it instead of like a blumbering fucking random idiot who is just, giving like the meme talking points. Like he has the capability to do that, I imagine. I think that is factual. I always like to point to an exact uh, study, right? Sure. Something that is factual. It's the same thing when you talk about, well, let's see what the replies are on Twitter or on X. Yeah, so, so, I, I, so I, feel the same, I feel the same way about that. But this is what studies have shown and people will reply and they'll say that companies with more diversity and their leadership team. Imagine making Destiny the CEO of SpaceX and when a rocket crashes, Elon is like, why didn't you do better, Steven? But like, I didn't follow any of these companies that closely, but I feel like that's actually kind of what happened. This is how I feel like, this is how I feel like modern Elon would answer SpaceX questions, okay? Everybody's watching the rocket, the rocket takes off, and then the rocket crashes. And modern day Elon is like, somebody's like, so what happened? And he's like, well, well you see, there's, um, a lot, there, there, um, there's a lot of challenges. And when, you, when, when you're making uh, rockets, the, the fuel, 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 fuel propulsion systems, is the, the, there's a lot of challenges when it comes to m making rockets today that a lot of people aren't aware of. Like, it feels like that would be his answer today. Like. 10 years ago, because I remember watching rockets crash and shit. I feel like I remember Elon Musk saying shit like, hey, rockets crash, that's part of the process. When they fail, we get a lot of data and then we do better on our next one. I feel like that's what I remember him saying back in the day. It wasn't a bunch of weird, cope, autistic, stupid shit. I thought it was usually him being pretty honest. Like, yeah, sometimes they crash. We expect to lose some of them. When they crash, we learn, we collect data, and then we do it better the next time. Like, that's what it feels like his answers used to be. But he, my guess is when it comes to rocketeering or rocket engineering and car shit, he probably has a little bit more engineering information or that's a little bit more technical to speak about that a little bit more honestly, whereas this is just autism. <clears throat> have reported higher innovation. No, raised... not autism. This is stupidity. Sorry, not it's not even autism. I don't want to give him that. Send those in, with a lower um, with lower diversity or low diversity, and they, they're better companies and they make more money. This whole idea about DEI, if you go woke or whatever, you go broke. That's not necessarily true. People with diverse leadership teams and diverse um, workers make more money and more innovative. Um, like I said, my view is that the, the only basis for promoting somebody should be uh, their skills, talents, and uh, their integrity, and that's it. I want to ask you about, there's a, there's a federal government, uh, EEOC, is, they are also currently involved in a lawsuit against Tesla that alleges that there is a history of widespread racial harassment against black Tesla employees, as well as a pattern of retaliation for speaking out. Wait, you can see the trash speaking here. Wait, what? Yeah. You 
Yeah. But we are constantly talking about do we have the right number of grids? Like, like we're they designed correctly. Yes. Yeah, so like we're not saying we're right, right. Uh, to be clear. Like we're we're definitely not optimal optimal, but we uh, uh it'll work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, don't know, don't care. Sorry. What do you say to that? There is a federal government uh, EEOC. They are also currently involved in a lawsuit against Tesla that alleges that there is a history of widespread racial harassment against black Tesla employees, as well as a pattern of retaliation for speaking out. What do you say to that? Uh, well, uh, there's, I, I don't believe that is, that is true. Um, I think we've got a very good, uh, uh, like if, if you walk around the, the, te the Tesla Fremont uh, plant, I think it's a very good atmosphere. Elon Musk doesn't debate for a living. Also with rockets, he is an expert. He isn't a DEI expert. Also, he is trying not to say anything that would cancel him. Okay, well then don't offer massively strong opinions about it on your platform. That's easy, isn't that easy enough to do? Don't reply under like, all Jewish people raping four-year-olds constantly. And then like, looking into this. <laughs> like, just, you don't, have to, you don't have to have an opinion on every single thing on your platform. I don't know what Mark Zuckerberg thinks about the average. I don't know any of his political positions. Is Mark Zuckerberg on Facebook all the time agreeing under crazy stories? Like, oh, true, Trump rapes all women. Oh my God, checking this out now, curious. Like, just, you just don't, you don't have to comment on every single fucking thing. Um, in fact, I, I practically lived there for three years trying to make the production work. Were you uh, aware if you lived there, were you aware of such behavior? I never saw it. <laughs> that's like, that's... I think you would want to give a positive instead of a negative answer there. Rather than like, I never saw it, it would be like, Tesla, we have a strong commitment to uh, all of our employees. We have firm policies on the books about that we enforce about not harassing any employees due to anything like race or sex or gender, whatever. We've got HR, if anybody's ever wanted to make a complaint, they're free to do so. Like, we've never had a complaint like this before, blah, blah, blah. Like, rather than just like, I didn't see it. <laughs> Behavior, I never saw it. You're less at hang there too. So you're saying that this is not true, it's not happening? <laughs> well, I mean, there's over 20,000 people. So you say like, if there's over 20,000 people in one building, um, well, is everyone gonna be, behave perfectly? No. Did I oh, like this is like a, you're almost like admitting the thing. You don't have to, you don't have to bite this bullet. There's no, especially as a CEO, you don't have to bite this bullet, bro. Damn. Over 20,000 people in one <sighs> building. Um, well, is everyone gonna be, behave perfectly? No. Did I see any any situations that I thought were uh, improper? I did not. Uh, let's talk about trans rights and the, the woke mind virus because you've talked about that a lot. You write about that a lot on the thing. You have been deeply outspoken about the issue of trans rights. You posted trans rights. You uh, posted that pronouns and bio mean the woke mind virus ate your brain. Do you know what the term woke actually means? <laughs> um, oh no. It's come to mean a lot of things. Oh no! But it actually, what originally it was meant to mean, it's just being aware of inequities in society and, and being aware of facts and, and history. Yeah, I think it's come to be. I think I think being aware of inequities in society is fine, of course, um, but uh, trying to blame everything uh, on on trying to make everything a race issue is, uh, I think, a divisive and corrosive to society even as it relates to trans issues, which is what I'm... Yeah, race or, you know, a, a gender or whatever. You think blaming, you think that society blames everything on racism now? It blames a lot of things on it, and, uh, yeah. You think that's unfair? Yeah. Why? I think, I think we should, we should, we should, we should uh, not, not make this a constant uh, subject. I think we need to move on. I think we should. Destiny, doesn't he talk like Ayla a bit? Ayla is very good at hearing something, understanding what's being asked, and forming a coherent response that addresses what was being asked. I, regardless of if Ayla speaks in whatever way, she very clearly can follow a conversation at a high level and, and participate in said conversation. Just, you know, um, treat people like people. How would you define Twitter woke? Twitter woke is like when the 2014 SJW, okay, started trend and is now out of fucking control, all right? You don't agree that there's, this country was founded on racism and founded on slavery and, and in many ways inequities? Um, that still continue on to this uh, day. I, Meanwhile, Destiny would never have the courage to make these kinds of statements if he was the CEO of coming. Uh, I'm the CEO of Destiny.gg LLC and I make these statements. I make stronger statements all the fucking time. 
motherfucker. We will have a. Never mind. That was something way too edgy. Thank you. I think every country uh, at, at that time, and I think even today, uh, was uh, extremely racist. Um, every country. Um, and um, obviously, uh, uh, slavery was present in uh, about half of this country. Um, and. No, but not was not present in the in the uh, north. Uh, there was racism for sure, uh, but you know, the I, th I think we 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 want to look to the future rather than the past, um, and uh, instead of engaging in uh, constant rehashing of the past, uh, because it, it, in, in fact, if you look at history, if you study history broadly, everyone was a slave. Everyone. Yes. Well, not everyone was a slave. No, but everyone was a slave. Okay, but <laughs> we, we, we are we are we are all descended from slaves. Yeah, well, all of us. Yeah. But, um, so, but it's just a question of when. Was it, was it more recent or less recent? That's it. Right. Um, so the but what what future do we want? Do we, we are. Want, is this something we want to make part of our constant dialogue forever, or do we, do we want to say like let's just move on and treat everyone, uh, you know, uh, according to just who they are as an individual. I agree with you with that. That's the ideal. But what the evidence shows is that that's not what's actually in practice. I think we're doing better than anywhere else. That, that's true. I agree with that. But that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean a lot to a whole lot of people who aren't able to take advantage of the opportunities that you are able to take advantage of simply because the color of your skin. What advantages did my color of my skin give me? <laughs> Bro, you're like a 40, 50 year old guy from South Africa. Is it? Where did he grow up at? I don't actually know where he grew up. Maybe he went to fucking London or some shit. That's a wild. That's a wild question. Wait, not this. He's born in seventy one in Pretoria, South Africa's administrative capital. Some British and Dutch ancestry. He went all, he lived up there through high school. He got a 61 in Africans. Uh oh. And then it looks like he went to college in the US. Oof. Oof. Well, oof. What advantage? What, what advantages do it do? My color, my skin, give me. Well, there's a certain, there's an ease that you have in society that you that many people of color don't. You were able to come to this country voluntarily. There are many people who were not able to come to the country voluntarily. Oh man, does Lemon have no idea about? Voluntarily, there are people Actually, who I, came here as slaves. For me to come here, and there is a legacy of slavery that still continues on. There's a legacy of racism that still continues on in this country. Oh shit, Lemon is so woke brain. He forgets that other countries in the world exist and have their own racist policies. Because he's actually he, the actual. This is where Elon Musk should say it's interesting. You don't ask me about growing up under like actual fucking apartheid or whatever in South Africa. It's interesting you don't ask me about that because you've been you've been eaten by the woke mind virus, Don Lemon. You had a great gotcha here and you missed it. Or maybe it'll come up. Hold on. That's and that's undeniable. Well, if 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 we keep talking about it nonstop, it will never go away. <laughs> if we keep making it the central thing, it will never go away. Well, why do you believe that? I think I'm just making a simple statement of fact. Um, Please, so, it's true because it is. I think I think we want to get away from making everything a race or a gender or whatever issue. And just treat people like individuals. Do you have any desire to understand what? Men How many people do you think we're talking to Don after this? Like Don, he grew up in South Africa and says he doesn't think his race gave him any advantages. Don, how did you let him escape this point? Don, Don, he must be, he must be killing himself after this. People of color and even trans people, um, how they feel about this country and how they're treated in this country if they if they say and they believe that they are treated a certain way in this country, why don't you believe them? You, you, you cannot have a situation where, where someone is, is a self-described victim and, and, they, and they just get to be that because that's how they feel. I think that that does happen in some cases, but not all cases. 
And I think that not understanding the history of the country, I think it Theoretically, a 4% of pilot school grads were women, but only 0.4% of pilots hired a year were women. Would you see that as a problem some DEI initiative could solve or should all be hiring or should all hiring be in touch? I, I don't know anything about DEI. Like I said, I can, I can Im imagine things where DEI or um, affirmative action things are done in good ways, and I can imagine where they're done in bad ways. Um, yeah, it just it super depends. Probably anything that involves the lowering of standards. Uh, I don't obviously. I don't think I would ever support that. I don't think anybody should. But it just depends on how what these policies look like in practice. Is um, is a, a real shame. Look, I've had we should understand I've had incredible history, opportunities country and other countries. I've had incredible opportunities as a person of color. Right, but I've also You're been doing very well. But I've also been discriminated against, and I know that I have. Can you give an example of good and bad? Um, sure. I guess like let's say that. Um, Let's say that in order to in order to become a pilot, let's say that you need uh, 250 hours of registered flight time. Or for a commercial pilot, let's say you need 500 hours or 1,000 hours of registered flight time. Let's say that you find that um, women don't want to make that commitment. Well, let's say you change it so that um, you want to hire a certain percentage of women, and then you drop the required flight time to 750 hours so that more women pass that hurdle of 750 hours, and now you can have more women to choose from. I would say that that's probably bad. That would be a not good thing. Um, let's say that you want more, let's say that you want more women as pilots though, and part of your diversity, equity, inclusion, you think that women could be pilots, they just don't seem to have an interest in going to schools for it. So let's say that you start increasing funding to in like job fairs or career fairs or college fairs or whatever, where you make an effort to go out and try to intern more women or try to recruit more women to pilot training programs, right? And you don't change the standards at all, you just like reach out more to them. And then as a result of that, you're able to boost up your female pilots. I don't think that's the worst thing. I think it's fine, probably. Um, if, if you wanna try to increase the um, allotment of women or black people or whatever the fuck there, and you're doing it by increasing your outreach or increasing the education or the capabilities, I think it's probably okay. Just, it depends on the thing, it depends on who we're talking about, how we're, how exactly it's being executed, yeah. And I know that that's real. And for someone to say that that isn't happening, I should not, I should just move forward and not think about that and ignore the past is insulting. I'm not saying it, Don, you keep putting words on Why would you want more women pilots when you want more better pilots regardless of who they are? Well, my understanding is you would have qualifiers to pass, and as long as people are passed, it's fine. It shouldn't be like, this is the good pilot, and these are the shit ones that are more likely to wreck their shit. Like, it should be like pass-fail in general, not like Delta gets like the A-plus pilots and like the D-minus ones go to Frontier, and as long as not, there's not too much turbulence, they won't crash the fucking plane. <laughs> like, in my mouth. I'm not saying it's-, it's I didn't say that you said it. Oh, that but in general, I think more diverse work environments, more diverse environments tend to be better for a variety of reasons. There's just a lot that happens when you're pulling a different, pe different people from different backgrounds. I'm pretty sure you can actually see like, um, I'm pretty sure you can actually see like higher returns to firms over long periods of time when they have more diverse workforces. Although it's really hard to tease out why that happens. But there's been, I think a couple of large studies. I've seen a couple of the, um, I think a couple of MBER papers. That's not a journal. Working papers, and then I think there was a published thing on a big. Well, I'd have to go look for it. Somebody go look for this. You can find it, or don't believe me. Whatever you can go. Just move forward and not think about that, and ignore the past. Is Destiny LLC diverse? Uh, yes, we hire women. We hire uh, Somalians. We hire Australian Asians. Uh, we're ran by a proud Cuban American. Uh, yes, Destiny LLC is incredibly diverse. They did, they did this in Texas for hairstylists by reducing the hours needed to graduate. Not as big of a deal, but an example of lowering the standards of graduate. Okay. Is insulting. Not, I should just move forward and not think about that and ignore the past is insulting. I'm not saying it. Don, you keep putting words in my mouth. I'm not saying it. It's, I didn't it's, say it's, that you said it. I'm saying that we want to, we, we, as, we as a country should move beyond questions of, of, of race and gender and we should treat people like individuals and, and base our opinions on them on the, you know, uh, their, their, uh, their, their, their character and their skills. I don't think that anyone will disagree with that. Exactly. All I'm saying is that that's not happening and is not equal for everyone. That those opportunities don't happen for everyone. And I am a living example that they don't. I know that they don't because I live it. You've been incredibly successful. I have been, and I in spite of it all. But I, but I am, I know what I know. I've experienced what I- All right. <sighs> Time for the black test. Is Don Lemon an African-American or is he like a second generation African immigrant? I have no idea. Let's find out, I'm curious. He's 
was born in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Okay, all right. Son of Catherine Marie and, and Wilman Lee Richardson. His father was a prominent attorney who was part of a lawsuit sexually challenging segregation and pub a public transportation in Baton Rouge. Okay. Wilman was born under the surname of his mother's then husband. It's mostly African American. It's not Creole. His mother. Okay. Based. Baker High School, public high school in the town of Baker in East Baton Rouge Parish. And he attended Louisiana State University. Okay. That's a, that's a strong African-American black card. I have experience, you have. How would that change your take? Because when second generation, like Kenyan, like super wealthy African immigrants come to the United States and talk about the struggles of the black experience, it's cringe as fuck, okay? But Don over here has got, he's a credentialed true American black man. I'm successful, I have been I mean, in spite of it all, but I, but I am, I know what I know. I've experienced what I've experienced. You haven't done that. And I cannot, um, I don't know what it's like to be from South Africa. I don't know what it's like to be a white man. I don't know what it's like to be a woman. I don't know what it's like to be a Latino mm -hmm. person. I don't know that. So I wouldn't speak for them and just say, you need to move on. That's not for me to say. I maybe I believe that the country, it would be great if the country could live up to that ideal. You think that everyone has the same opportunities in America, regardless of their background and ethnicity. Do you agree? You've no, I don't that. think everyone has the same opportunities. Okay. okay. So um, when you talk about, let's talk about trans rights. When you decided to, um, to talk about the, the trans rights movement, um, you said that it was a woke mind virus. Why do you believe the trans rights movement is a woke mind virus? What do you mean by woke mind virus? Well, one virus is um, when you, you, you stop caring about uh, people's skills um, and their integrity, and you start focusing instead on gender and race and other things that are different from that. Um, I think uh, the world wine virus is fundamentally racist, fundamentally sexist, and fundamentally evil. Okay. And, uh, we, we... Elon thought he was going to have a high quality interview with a skilled presenter slash journalist. Unfortunately, got a lemon. Good one. Uh, Elon isn't worth a high quality interview. He's, he just can't, he doesn't have the verbal skills to have one. Has there ever been like an incredibly insightful interview with Elon Musk that wasn't just a dick sucking fest? Don doesn't know the true burden of the white man neither. True! We've got a little bit more time, so yeah, yeah, yeah. you choose your question. Okay, so, <laughs> okay, thank you for that, but uh, you, uh, I would appreciate you. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'm really evil. The world wine virus is fundamentally racist, fundamentally sexist, and fundamentally evil. Okay. And uh, we've got a little bit more time, so yeah, yeah, yeah. you choose your question. Okay. Yes. Except for the Lex interview. If Lex interviewed him, I bet that was the most insightful, amazing interview of all fucking time, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for that, but uh, you, uh, I would appreciate you answering these. I think it's important that we're doing this. I think it's important to the, to world, the world to hear this, especially what's going on uh, in our country. The reason every I time he interviewed it. if it was three or four times then that's probably why elon gives such bad interviews is because lex milks all of the best interview material out of elon musk I ask you listen there are a whole lot of things that people maybe uh, have questions about when it comes to transgender people even people who are part of the lgbtq sure. or plus community have, have questions about that but if you are a free speech absolutist right um, and that is part of the first amendment also the freedom of expression falls under that first amendment as well so why can't people choose to identify with the gender that they feel comfortable with or with a, use a pronoun? Isn't that part of freedom of expression? Uh, I guess though that they can, they can ask others to do whatever. Are only verbally skilled people worth skilled interviewers? He is the richest person in the world. You would want a good interviewer. Uh, may, I just never, I just, like I said, I could be wrong. I don't know, maybe they are buried in those looks. I just never heard Elon say anything that's just like that insightful. That's like, oh, huh, I never considered that. Um, or, oh, that's like genuinely like really interesting. Same thing with Donald Trump too, though. Um, probably same thing with Mark Zuckerberg. I haven't heard him do a bunch of speeches either. Mark Cuban is kind of interesting to listen to sometimes. I don't know if you, maybe you consider him left-leaning though, so that's like, doesn't count, but I don't know. I just don't know if that many billionaires are that interesting or have that much interesting shit to say. I'm not sure. But they, Feel they can they can ask others to do anything. What, it's a different question whether they, whether they mandate that others do anything. Okay. okay. 
let's let's talk more about free speech and for advertisers, right? Because all, all this controversy, I, I believe, as you know, has made um, X less appealing to advertisers. About half of them have left. Oh, the Warren Buffett stuff relating to um, Warren Buffett stuff relating to uh, investments and, and everything. It's been a long time since I've listened to anything he said. I haven't heard anything recent. Form you call advertisers that left X. Uh, dot com. He said there were oppressors. You've even gone as far as saying it publicly that they can go f themselves or go fuck themselves. Advertise if they're, if they're going to force censorship on the, on the company uh, before advertising, then uh, obviously I find that unacceptable. You find it unacceptable. Why is that not a form of, of free speech? They are free to advertise where they want. They're not beholden to. They're not yeah. obligated to advertise they're not on obligated. Next. Com. Right. So. How is that not free speech? The, they, they, that's, whereas the other platforms will censor on behalf of, of advertisers, the X platform will not. Okay. So, but you think it's, uh, you don't think it's okay for them not to advertise with or pad their... That's because Lex is in a bad faith partisan hack out to just get clips. Lex is actually capable of having an intellectual convo. Thank you, Sleepy. Content or their advertisement next to something that is anti-Semitic or... That is a different question. Uh, you, you, we, we, there's, there's, you can absolutely choose where, next to which content do you want your advertising to appear. Absolutely, of course. Mm -hmm. And we do, we have, I think, very good ad placement controls in this regard. Yeah. So you said if they kill the company, it's them. But doesn't the buck stop with you? I mean, you're on... I have to say... I, uh, oh, man, he's getting mad. Uh -oh. Choose your question carefully. There's five minutes left. <laughs> so, is this same, the question you want to ask? The same question is you said you said that they oh, are killing man. the company, but you're the head of the company. The buck doesn't stop with you. I acquired X in order to preserve freedom of speech in America, the First Amendment, and I'm going to stick to that. And if that means making less money, so be it. So I have to be, listen, I, I'm just being honest, right? I'm not trying to, like, get you or anything. How do you, oh, he's about to try to get him. How do you think Musk compares it speaking to Biden? Um, I don't know. I haven't heard Biden in many, I think they try to control his speeches pretty carefully. I don't know how good Biden would do in an incredibly hostile or combative interview. My guess is probably not very well at this age. That'd be my guess. Um, but his, his appearances are pretty well controlled, probably in part due to that. Thing. To be, listen, I, I'm just being honest, right? I'm not trying to, like, get you or anything i was just surprised that you would blame other people for killing the company i mean you're the i mean when you say the buck stops with the president of the united states regardless of what happens right so i <laughs> wait what did satan just speak for a second wait am i am i crazy regardless of what happens right so Sorry, okay. Stops with the president of the United States regardless of what happens, right? So, I, why, would this, why would that question upset you? You seem upset by it, are you? I think you- And I'm not trying to upset you. The way, well, you are upsetting me because the way you're phrasing questions, I think, is, is not cogent. Um, it's not uh, what? Not cogent. Cogent. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, so, uh, the, if, 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 if given a choice where an advertiser is saying, like, you have to censor all this content on the, on the platform, irrespective of where their advertising appears, uh, then RS will be like, look, you, you, you can choose where you want your advertising, what you want your advertising to appear next to, but you can't insist on censorship of the entire platform. And if you insist on censorship of the entire platform, even where your advertising doesn't appear, uh, then uh, obviously we will, we will not uh, want them as an advertiser. So what, what would you say to advertisers to, who have left the platform or who are considering coming back or not coming back? What would you like to say to them? Well, first of all, uh, almost all of our advertisers are coming back to the platform. So it's a very short list of advertisers who are not coming back to the platform. Um, Church of Scientology called the Threaten Me Once, called the Threaten Me Once, and the first part was in demon voice. I have this on camera. And. Uh, our advertising revenue is rising rapidly uh, and our subscription revenue is rising rapidly and I feel very optimistic about the future of the X Bible. Okay. 
Listen, I'm not, I'm, honestly, I'm not meaning to offend you. You're an intense person. Where does that intensity come from? I was born that way. I had a tough childhood. <laughs> did he though? Did he actually? Maybe he did. I don't know. I don't know as much about his background. You did? So, yeah. How no. so? No time. All right, Walter Isaacson goes into it in the book, and, and we only have a couple minutes left, so. All right. Too long to, to describe. Oh, so, yeah. Apparently, when his parents split, he went with his dad, and he said that he, um, he hated that decision, so maybe he super hated his dad, yeah. The one or two questions I can do, and then we'll have to call it. I, okay, again, I don't mean to upset you. Why are you, you just. <laughs> no, I, I have a whole room full of people waiting to meet with me. Okay. So we're just going over time. Okay. All right. I understand that. Um, so you, when you talk about, you said you were born that way. Is that, um, did you, you think that the way that you see the world has to do with your relationship with anyone, perhaps your, your father or someone in, in your family? I think we're all affected by the people we grew up, we grew up with. Um, my aspiration is to uh, do whatever it takes to extend the extend consciousness into the future. That's my goal, um, to make life multiplanetary as part of extending constant consciousness into the future. Has this, has, have the past few years and considering everything that's gone on, has it been difficult for you and your family life? Is this an act by Lemon? Surely he would have known he's agitated him. Well, yeah, of course. Again, he's trying to get him to say something more like, oh, well, why are you upset? Like, there's a chance that that answer blows up. And he's like, well, I'm mad because you did blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, he's, he's prodding the fuck out of him. Yeah, of course. That's what he's doing. He has been, like, throughout the interview, right? That one little thing where he's like, uh, oh, D-I-E. Did you spell that incorrectly, I guess? And then keeps going. <laughs> he's prodding the fuck out of him. Yeah. Hey, dude. It's been okay. Hi, what's up? Hey, I uh, watched most of your debate with Finkelstein, or Finkelstein. Oh, yeah, um, fun time. I think you did really good. Um, one opportunity you missed, though. You know how um, they refuse to engage with any of the actual material with the ICJ ruling? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Um, and they and Finkelstein just uh, you know harped on about oh the American judge and all this shit. You should have brought up his hypocrisy with uh, Russia and the ICJ. Oh, true. I could have. I tried to demonstrate that yeah. at least with the Houthi question, but I also I have, I'm not fully aware of the ICJ case with Russia right now. But that is true because I, well, also, but I don't know what he said about it. Does Norm Finkelstein think that they were wrong about that? Well. Um, he thinks the Russian, inv I, I don't know if the, he thinks they're wrong, but I know He's, he, he supports their invasion, or he says it like they've got good reason to invade. Yeah, but, but I don't know if he said they have good the reason to invade. As far as I understand, he also denies the idea that Russia has um, kidnapped children. Mm -hmm. So, given that the ICJ has ruled that uh, the Russian invasion is illegal, Putin has an arrest warrant out for himself, and they've also ruled that Russia is kidnapping children, pretty crazy for him to put so much value in the ICJ saying there's plausible plausibility with a genocide, you know, for Israel, but then when they rule on all that with Russia, he doesn't give a shit. Yep, I don't know, maybe. I just, I don't know his opinion on any of that, but yeah, that could be a, a good point to bring up, yeah. Yeah, but um, I, I also wanted to say, um, you definitely should have gone a bit harder on Finkelstein, I'd say especially at the beginning of the debate. Um, not only was the guy calling, calling you a moron, but um, give, give me a second. Uh, not only was the guy calling you a moron, but um, like, I, I just thought there was a lot of opportunities for you to just press him harder. Like, no, answer this question. Like, he he dodged like crazy so many times. And yeah, I think the de debate bro thing would have been appropriate there because like that guy is so disingenuous and he just dodges like crazy. Really, both of them did. Um, the other guy was just more respectful. Um, and tactful, uh, whereas Finkelstein, you moron, you uneducated simpleton, like. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand it. I think it might have been more satisfying, but I think it was okay. I think I, I think I demonstrated that Finkelstein is unhinged like crazy. So, but we'll I'll see. Yeah. I'll see in a month or two how I feel about it. Yeah.
Yeah, um, but I think he did good overall. Okay, well, thanks. I love All you. right, man, we'll take care. Be careful. Destiny, how influential do you think Elon has been on moving the needle forward with electric vehicles and the development of a private space program? Uh, I think he was probably instrumental. I don't know if we would have any private space program if not for him. And it feels like he moved the uh, needle forward on electrical vehicles by like 10 years. Uh, I feel like before Tesla, people were talking about electric vehicles for a long time. But even today, has anybody made as much significant progress towards it as Tesla? Doesn't seem like it, so. So then how do you see your legacy, Elon? How, how do you see how well, people see it in the... First of all, I say that the... Um, if I died knowing that I, that I did what was right or, or did my best to do what was right, and even if in the history books they said I did, did wrong, I would still feel okay about that. I care about the reality of goodness, not the perception of it. Um, I think we should view civilization uh, as tenuous, as fragile. Um, if, you, if you do study history broadly, you'll see that there's a rise in pulled civilizations. They don't always go up. Um, so we should do everything we possibly can to preserve... We have had Lockheed Martin and ULA rockets for decades prior to SpaceX. Oh shit, my bad. Um, can you link me the videos of Lockheed uh, dropping astronauts off of the ISS? Can you link me videos of ULA rockets carrying human astronauts into space? I just, I must have missed all that, my bad. Uh, and, and extend civilization as we know it. Yeah. Um, and improve it. Um, it's become more enlightened over time. And we uh, therefore want to address civilizational risks. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we don't have, for example, demographic collapse, which is the case in a lot of countries, uh, just very low birth rate. Um, we, we want to avoid, obviously, avoid World War III. Anything that is a civilizational risk, that is what I care about, civilizational risks. Um, how do we extend consciousness into the future such that we are able to better understand the, the nature of reality. Yeah. That's what I care about. That's my motivation. I know you have to go. If you'll just give me, a, uh, I'll do a rapid fire thing here. Is, oh, if there, is there anything that you would change about um, anything that you've done in your life in the past or recently? Um, I've made many mistakes over the years. If I had a time machine, I'd go back and fix them. Uh, but I don't have a time machine. <laughs> thank nice. you. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Like, thank you so much. So that's it. And as Elon would say, you be the judge. Let me tell you something about this show. The conversation doesn't end just because the camera stops. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Donnie. Thanks for watching The Don Lemon Show. Click on the image in the top right to subscribe to my channel and the thumbnail in the bottom right to watch more content from my show. I'll see you next time. What does lay epic Redditors think? It's hilarious to see Elon changes his mind about hosting Don's show in real time during this interview. Don was either being intentionally obtuse or was genuinely an idiot. Everyone is going to pile on Elon, but Lemon is also a piece of shit. Damn.